This? Or this one? Ugh, this is such an impossible decision. It's my senior year, so I wanted this last prom to be the most memorable. I wonder which guy will ask me to prom first. Adam's cute, but he's so hot and cold with me. Then there's Devin, the school's hottest swimmer. Oh, and I also heard rumors that Ethan, the most popular jock in school, was planning to ask me to prom at the next baseball game. <laughs> my buzzing phone broke me from my thoughts. It was a message from my friend Donna saying, Phoebe, have you seen the news? Lockdown starts tomorrow! Oh my god, this couldn't be legit. Could it? What about prom? Then I received another message from the prom committee. Due to the current rule changes, unfortunately, prom's been cancelled. No! Unbelievable! My prom! <sighs> it was another message. Jeez, I was getting sick of them. I hoped it would be Donna telling me this was all a joke and prom wasn't cancelled, but no. I glanced at it and saw a text message from Jacob, a classmate I never spoke to. That's weird. Curious, I opened the message. Hey, Jacob. So, what do you want to ask me? Hi, and, um, can you help me model for a moment? I'm applying for the Art Institute in Chicago, and the application deadline is tomorrow. But I need to submit a drawing. I'll be posing for you to draw? But I've never modeled before. This sounds super important. Shouldn't you ask a professional? Well, don't worry. I already have all the ideas, and I think you are the most suitable person to model for me, as you're a natural beauty, and that will show in my work. Especially your beautiful eyes. Okay, then. If you say so. Let's do it. Jacob then instructed me how to pose. After that, he took out a piece of paper and started sketching carefully. Meanwhile, I was sitting there trying my best to help my friend by not moving. Hmm. Now that I had time to really look at him, I think Jacob is really handsome. Especially when he's so focused on drawing like this. Why has it taken me three years of high school to realize this? Strange. How can such a good-looking guy be pretty much invisible in my class? Maybe it's because he's a little on the shy side? Done. What do you think? Wow! You're so talented! I like it! I like it a lot! Really? When can we meet again? I'll give you this drawing! Oh, I thought you were gonna send it with your college application. Um, give me a sec. Just like that, he disappeared from the screen without even answering my question. After a while, Jacob returned with a picture frame in his hand. Then he put the picture he'd just drawn of me in it and hung it up in his room. In the meantime, I'll hang it here, so it's safe and, well, I get to, um, see you every day. Why, why did he say it like that? He's totally making me blush by now. What about your college application? Actually, I submitted them already. So, you tricked me? I'm sorry, it's not like that. Actually, I wanted to ask you something else, but because I'm really nervous, I ended up blurting out that I wanted you to model for me instead. So what exactly do you want to ask me? If you don't talk, I'll hang up. Wait! I know it's cancelled and all, but I don't want to spend the rest of my life not knowing your answer. So, um, if I asked you to go to prom with me, would you say yes? Um, I don't know. Only when I receive an official invitation will I consider it. I was giggling to myself at this point. Our class's shyest guy was being so genuine. But then he took a deep breath and said boldly, Phoebe, will you come to prom with me? Aw, I have to admit, I was really touched by Jacob's invitation. So I replied, yes! Dinner's ready, hun. Oh, that's my mom calling. I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, you go eat. Thank you. I've received the answer I needed anyway. I gave him my cutest smile and then ended the video call. 
Swoon? My heart was fluttering. After that moment, I couldn't stop imagining how great it'd be. Only if we weren't stuck in this stupid lockdown, Jacob would have escorted me to prom and... Oh my, imagine how perfect we would look together. Such a pity. Now all I could do was just think about him all day. A few days passed, only Jacob hadn't contacted me. Not once. This made me antsy. I was constantly checking my phone. Then there were times I was so close to tech him first. But for what reason, though? I had nothing to tell him. Aha! Got it! Phoebe? What happened? Jacob, I've screwed up. Calm down and tell me what's happened. I... I almost burned the house down. Huh? What? What did you do? I forgot to turn off the stove while frying the eggs. You see? Does it look like crime scene evidence? <laughs> what have you done to the poor pan? That worked a treat. As after that, we video chatted almost every day and talked about all kinds of things, from our dreams for the future to our favorite puddings. On the one rare day we didn't chat, I felt myself feeling restless. Is it possible that I was lovesick? One time, while I was standing in the garden talking to Jacob, Nancy, my gossipy sister, caught me. Expectedly, during dinner that night, Nancy told my mother that I had a boyfriend. Ugh, what a snitch. Why did my mother give birth to me and her as well? Fine. And FYI, my mom is one of those super strict types of parents. Phoebe, what did I tell you? Before graduation, you can't date. Mom put her fork down and gave me a serious look. But we're just friends. No buts. From now on, focus on studying and stop contacting him. Understand? Annoyed, I stormed off to my room. That night, I couldn't sleep a wink. I longed to hear Jacob's voice so badly. I missed him. Then, at midnight, I somehow ended up picking up my phone and texting him. I know it's late, but... Are you awake? I'm so stupid. Of course he wasn't going to be awake at this... Oh, it's Jacob! I'm awake. You want to talk? So he called me, and we talked in whispers so no one overheard me. I told Jacob about the argument with my mom. He advised me not to be angry with her because she just cared about me. Then he said, On your birthday this year, I'll come over and prove to your parents that you've chosen the right person. Choose the right person? What do you mean? I mean, will you be my girlfriend? I was still feeling somewhat confused when he suddenly started singing. But darling, just kiss me slow. Your heart is all I own. And in your eyes, you're holding mine. I love that Ed Sheeran song. My heart melted with each word Jacob sang, and I found myself softly saying, I do. Oh my god, he's officially my boyfriend now. This was so exciting. I just wish I was back at school to show him off. We secretly chatted every day, and he was the ray of light in my boring days during the lockdown. But then one day, he didn't reply. I didn't think much of it at first. You know, maybe he was busy drawing or something. But then, when the day was coming to an end, and I still hadn't received a reply from him, I started to freak out. Was he sick? Only at past midnight, he finally messaged me. I'm sorry. I feel kind of down today, so I couldn't talk to you. Oh no, why was he so sad? Hearing this, I couldn't be patient anymore. So I called him right away, over and over but the only response was a long beep, then followed by a text a little later. I don't want you to see me in this state. I'm sorry. What was wrong? He was always such an optimistic guy. Something really terrible must have happened to make him feel like that. Feeling anxious, I continued to call him, until, eventually, he gave in and answered. Then he told me what was wrong. Lockdown was the final straw for his wearing parents, and now they were getting a divorce. <sighs> I felt so sorry for him. Oh, how I wished I could have run to him right away. 
he actually only lived a few blocks away from me. So we planned to sneak out to see each other in the park. From a distance, of course. The plan was that I would open the door on the slide to run outside, while Mum was in the kitchen. Phoebe, what are you doing? I... I... Come inside and set the table. The food's getting cold. Ugh, my plan failed completely. <sighs> I'm sorry, I couldn't get out. My mom caught me. A few minutes later, Jacob's reply showed up. Turned out, he'd already snuck out and had been waiting for me at the park. I felt so guilty, so I called him at once. He tried to put on a smile, but I knew he was really bummed out so I blew him a kiss to cheer him up. This really brightened him up. Then he said that as soon as lockdown was over, he was giving me a real kiss. Just like that, time went on, and we learned how to make the most of this relationship in the pandemic era. Everything was good until one day he told me some news that struck me like a lightning bolt. He'd received an offer letter from the art college in Chicago. He'd got in! Of course, Jacob was excited. And I was really happy for him. But Chicago was a whole different state, so I'd never get to see him. Jacob said he was still wondering if he should go or not, as he didn't want to leave me. Me neither, but how could I tell him not to go? Jacob, please go chase your dream. Don't give it up over a girl whose hand you've never held. If I go, then what about us? Just leave it. Whatever will be, will be. After that day, there were no more messages or calls from Jacob. Perhaps he was busy arranging things for college. I missed him so much, but I had to let him live his life. <sighs> then, on the same day Jacob left, I received a package. I took it up to my room and opened it. Inside was the painting which he had asked me to model for. It's really beautiful. The painting! Now how am I supposed to forget you when I have to look at this every day, Jacob? <sighs> the city eventually came out of lockdown, and things were pretty much back to some kind of normal. It was just that... <sighs> I couldn't stop thinking about Jacob, and how different things would be if he was still here. We hadn't spoken since that time we broke up. I guess it was easier this way. But it didn't stop it from sucking. And to make it even worse... Today's my birthday, and all I could think about was him. I was sitting there trying to fake delight as my family brought me out a cake and sang me happy birthday. Hang on, who's that? Standing behind my parents? Oh my, it can't be. It's Jacob! Oh, yes, I found this one loitering outside. He seems keen to see you, and, well, it is your birthday. So I suppose I'll let the no-boys rule slide for today. Mom smiled. I couldn't help it. I darted out of the chair and leapt into Jacob's arms. I asked him why he was here and, grinning, he replied, I have a promise to keep. Then I introduced him to everyone. And being the perfect guy he was, he's really mature and friendly toward my family. And they love him. But soon the day ended, and he went to leave... So, with reluctance, I walked him out to say goodbye. Jacob then held my hand and said, Look, Phoebe, when I was away, I realized how much I like you. And if you have the same feelings, could we give this long-distance relationship a try? Without giving me time to answer, he continued, I'll try my best to contact and come back here often. I will never leave you feeling lonely. I promise. His words were really touching, but... Jacob, I'm sorry. I don't think we can do long distance. Why not? Because I've applied to College Columbus in Chicago, and I got in. We're going to be neighbors! Have you ever met someone and known instantly that they are the one for you? I wish I'd realized sooner so that my teenage years hadn't been so full of drama and heartbreak. But you live and learn, right? And better late than never. By the way, I'm Versalis, and I'm 24 years old. It all began 14 years ago when I moved to New York and started at a new school. 
At that time, I assumed that moving from my hometown in France to New York would be no big deal. My mom and I were super excited and truly believed it would change our lives. Indeed, it did, but not in the ways I ever expected. On my first day at my new school, my mother insisted on driving me to school. When we arrived, I gave my mom a kiss on both of her cheeks and waved goodbye. My mom joked that she'd sort out any of the kids who dared to mess with me. I did feel quite shy, but I thought she was just joking. Turns out she wasn't. At lunchtime, I sat down at a random table, and suddenly this girl appeared and said, What do you think you're playing at, sitting at our table? I didn't even have time to reply before she picked up my lunch tray and threw it off the table right into the trash can. I said, move, she said. Everyone was staring at us now. I was so upset, I just covered my face. I didn't want to be that crybaby in front of all these new people, but I couldn't help it. The tears started falling. Then something crazy happened. A voice boomed out through the cafeteria, saying, Get away from her! And then, the next moment, I felt a hand reach out for my hand, and when I looked up, this gorgeous tall boy was standing there looking at me when he picked me up on my feet. Excuse me, the girl started, but the boy continued, What is wrong with you? Do you have a screw loose or something? Your attitude is so gross. It'll make me puke. You disgust me, and I don't want to be friends with someone like you. She stood there with her mouth wide open as he grabbed my hand and walked away. I could hear her scoff from behind me, but her facial expression looked as if she'd lost. I took his hand and followed him out of the cafeteria, and that's when he introduced himself as Ryder. We sat down outside, and he asked me if I was new around here, and then he told me he loved my accent. And he even offered me half of his baguette and said, Hey. Come on, chin up. I'll be your friend, okay? The best part is that the girl who bullied me had a major crush on him, so she was probably even angrier at me now. But I didn't care one bit. After that, I can't remember a time when we were apart. We were glued at the hip and did everything together. He taught me how to skateboard, and I taught him how to bake my famous pastries. We were like the dream team. He made me laugh so much, and he helped me become more confident. Day by day, I could tell I wanted to be more than just his friend, but I didn't dare tell him that. Then my 12th birthday rolled around, and my mom gave me a diary. She told me to write down all of my thoughts, and even my crushes so that I could reflect back on it one day. Then she winked at me and walked away. Ew, what was she talking about? I didn't have a crush. Did I? Okay, who am I kidding? I had the biggest crush ever on Ryder. Every time I saw him, I felt like there were a million butterflies in my stomach, and I woke up excited every day because I knew I'd get to see him. And then the time came for our school dance, and my friends were teasing me that I should go with Ryder. I kept telling them he was just my friend, but I couldn't fool them. They saw right through me. Later that day, Ryder invited me over to play video games, and as we were playing, he said... Hey, um, want to go to the dance with me? I couldn't believe it. My heart was thumping in my chest, but I tried to play it cool and said, Uh, sure, I guess. And you know what? We had the best time ever at the dance. I was for sure on cloud nine, and afterwards I decided to journal about it in my diary. I never wanted to forget that night. So I wrote pages upon pages of how Ryder made me feel and how I loved him so much. Little did I know how everything was about to change. A few days later, Ryder came over to my house, and as soon as I saw him, I had the biggest grin on my face. But quickly that grin faded when Ryder said he had something to tell me. I have some bad news. My family and I are moving to London in a month. This is a joke, right? Come on, stop playing around, I said, trying to hide the worry in my voice. But he just stayed quiet, and by then I knew he wasn't joking. I couldn't hold back the tears, and Ryder just reached out and held me in his arms, comforting me. He told me it would be okay, and we'd still keep in touch, but I felt like my whole world was crumbling around me. This was the worst news of my life. We decided to make our last month together the most fun we'd ever had. We went surfing, skateboarding, stargazing, and even did karaoke. I never wanted that month to end, but of course, 
It did. On our last night together, we had a slumber party and stayed up all night waiting for the sun to rise. When it came time to say goodbye, he gave me a framed photo of the two of us and said if I ever felt sad, I could just look at it and remember the happy times. I wanted to tell him how I felt, but I couldn't, and so he left. I was so down that I ran upstairs and covered myself under the blanket and cried. Later that night, as usual, I was about to write my day in my diary when it was nowhere to be seen. I shouted at my mom and blamed her, but she just said I must have misplaced it. Now I had no writer and no diary. My life sucked. Summer quickly ended and it was time for high school. Even though I had my friends, my life wasn't the same without Ryder. But life goes on, and so eventually I tried to move on from Ryder. My friends told me that this guy Lucas had always had a crush on me, and maybe I should give him a chance. Well, soon we started dating, and even though I didn't have the same special connection with him as I had with Ryder, it was still fun, and it took my mind off of things. Fast forward seven years, and Lucas and I were still together. The relationship wasn't great, but I had my dream job and was living in my dream loft apartment, so I couldn't complain too much. Plus, Ryder had drifted away from my mind. I decided it was time to really put some work into my relationship with Lucas. So one night, I told him I was working late and booked us a surprise trip to Paris. When I got home, I was so excited to tell Lucas, so I ran up to our bedroom, and to my complete horror, I found him lying in our bed kissing another girl. They didn't even notice me at first. So I screamed, what are you doing? Well, that got their attention, and the girl ran off. I thought Lucas would apologize, but he just said, what do you expect? You won't give me what I want, and you make me wait for marriage. Then he stomped out of the room and said, I can have any girl I want. I was so shocked. I just dropped to the floor and burst into tears. Finally, he showed me his true colors, and so I kicked him out. The next few weeks were some of the worst of my life, even worse than when Ryder moved to London. I felt so stupid for wasting so much time with Lucas. One night, I was particularly sad, and I suddenly remembered the framed photo Ryder had given me. I dug it out of the back of my wardrobe and held it close to my heart. My friends called me, tried to get me to go out with them. They did everything to help lift my mood up, but I wasn't interested. I just needed time alone to process everything. I thought to myself about how the only person I wanted to see now was Ryder. But where was he? How was he doing? I had no idea at all. Another depressing week went by. I was lounging on my couch, soullessly staring at the TV in boredom. Then suddenly there was a knock at the door. I went to open it, and oh my god, Ryder was standing there. Was this real or was I hallucinating? I was so surprised I just jumped into his arms and didn't want to let go. We must have stood there hugging for ages. And then suddenly Ryder said, I have something of yours. When I let go of him, he was holding my diary. Turns out Ryder had been in touch with my mom, and when she told him about my cheating boyfriend, he decided to come to New York and cheer me up. And then reality hit. He'd taken my diary? What if he'd read it? Well, he had... And he said that's why he'd come to see me, because he wanted to talk to me about it all. I was blushing like crazy. And then he said, I've always loved you, V. Even when we were kids, I've never stopped thinking about you, and I want to be with you. Then he reached over and kissed me, and I swear time just stopped. I'd been waiting for this moment my whole life. That week was like a haze of kissing and chatting and catching up on lost time. He told me about his ex-girlfriends, and I told him about Lucas and the cheating. Then I plucked up the courage and asked him if he'd like to go to Paris with me, seeing as the trip was already booked. Of course he said yes, and the next week we flew there and had the best week of our entire lives. We went to the Eiffel Tower and even visited my old neighborhood where I'd grown up. It was magical. And then one day Ryder said he had to do a bit of work and told me to go pamper myself at a local spa. When I was done, I had a text from him asking to meet him on the roof of our hotel. He was so romantic like that. I first went back to the hotel room where he'd laid out a black sparkly dress for me to wear, and then I headed up to the roof. I couldn't believe it! There were almost 1,000 roses laid out to form a path, and at the end of the path was Ryder wearing a suit. I love you, V. 
he began to say. I always have, and I can't imagine a life without you. Will you marry me? I gasped in shock and screamed, yes, at the top of my voice. I'd loved him ever since I was a kid, and now my dream of being together forever had finally come true. I guess it took us some time to reach this point, but the best things in life are worth waiting for, right? I kicked off my heels and threw my handbag down on the table. Jeez, I'm so tired. Should I quit this job? I thought out loud. I hoped my friends were home, as I needed to vent. I was about to lie down on the couch when I suddenly saw a shadow go toward the bathroom. I took a closer look. Um, there was a man doing something in my bathroom. Was our place getting robbed? Panicked, I grabbed one of my heels, then rushed forward and hit him with it. Thief! Thief! Hazel! Ivy! Thief! I shouted out as I continued to slam my heel into him. He held his head and kept saying, You, you misunderstood! I'm not... Suddenly, my two friends rushed over, but instead of helping me tackle the intruder, they pulled me off of him. Maya, stop! Hazel said hastily, He's with us! Oops! I put my heel down and gave a sheepish look. Well, thanks for the heads up! Then, Hazel asked the guy if he was okay. He didn't say anything. Instead, he just glared at me before he walked out of the room. Suddenly, Hazel and Ivy were pulling me toward the kitchen table for a chat. So, apparently, they decided to find a new tenant, and this Wesley guy was the chosen one. Jeez, it would have been nice if they'd run it past me first. I mean, I did live here. I frowned at them told them they sucked and that I didn't want to live with some random guy. Maya, we didn't tell you because we knew you'd act like this. Hazel sighed. But with the rent increase, we have no choice but to bring someone new into the mix. Besides, you have to admit that Wesley is nice to look at. Ivy said in a dreamy voice. Whatever, I crossed my arms. And no, I don't think he's in the slightest bit good looking. Hazel grinned as she said, No, because he now has heel imprints all over his head. I rolled my eyes, then grabbed my handbag and headed toward my room. I didn't want to live with some dumb guy. But thanks to my totally unreasonable friends, I didn't have much choice. The next day was Saturday. Thank God. So I slept until noon, then lazily went down to the kitchen to get some leftover pizza. Huh? Where was it? I knew Ivy and Hazel were too calorie-obsessed to touch it. It could only be Wesley. He was watching TV in the living room, so I went over to him and asked loudly, Did you eat my pizza? How dare you? Without looking away from his show, he said, Yeah, I threw it in the trash. He did what? Then he continued, You left it in the fridge to go bad and spoil all the other foods. Please don't do that again. Huh. Where was my apology? He'd thrown away my lunch, and now he dared to challenge me? How annoying! I was about to give him a piece of my mind when he handed me something and said, I made a list of house rules. I looked at the first three rules. Number one, wash up all your dirty dishes straight after use, then thoroughly clean the basin. Number two, write your initials on all your food and drinks and don't steal anyone else's. Number three, Shower time is 10 minutes maximum. Then clean the bathroom before leaving. What? Was this guy for real? Who in their right mind had the time or patience to write their initials on everything? I frustratingly replied to him, No way am I... Wesley interrupted me. Four people are living here, so the majority vote goes. I smirked at him. I knew for sure that Hazel and Ivy would never accept those stupid rules. They liked the messy, grab-it-and-go lifestyle even more than me, and Ivy spent at least an hour in the shower. So we all gathered in the living room, and Wesley handed out his rules. But to my surprise, Ivy only flicked out her hair, then said, Okay, Wesley. And Hazel fluttered her eyelashes and said, Sure, these rules seem great. Jeez, what was wrong with these girls? He wasn't even that handsome. 
Unfortunately, my love-struck friend's votes meant that I was outnumbered. I had no choice but to follow Wesley's ridiculous rules. The trash takeout rotation was so confusing. What was wrong with leaving it to overflow? I missed my slot, so Wesley stuck a post-it note to my door saying, take the trash out at 6 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and 7 p.m. on the other days. It's not difficult, W. Ugh, who even used post-it notes in this day and age? He was such a loser! Also, I have this box for my random items, you know, hair slides, pins, keepsake tickets, scarves, and so on, which I kept in the living room. It didn't matter where I moved it. Wesley shook his head and mouthed the word no at me. Yep, you guessed it. He stuck another post-it note to my door, this one saying, no personal clutter in the communal areas. W. In the end, I stuck the box into my closet so it was out of the way. Living with Wesley was a nightmare, especially when I finally quit my job at that lame law firm, which means I had to stay home with him pretty much all the time. This guy was just too meticulous. If any of us dared place anything in the wrong place, he glared at us and said, that isn't where it lives. Uh, couldn't I put the TV remote on the arm of the couch if I wanted to? I pay rent too. I didn't want to live in a model home. One time, I was chilling in my room when I turned around to see Wesley standing there. He looked around my messy room, shook his head, then picked up my bra from the floor. I immediately snatched it out of his hand and hid it. How embarrassing. Hey, why is your room so untidy? He tutted, then grunted out before leaving. Clean up right now. How dare he come into my room and order me about? I stomped out to the living room to confront him about it. But before I could do so, I was dumbfounded at the sight of Ivy and Hazel in the middle of a cleaning frenzy. Ivy smiled over at Wesley and said, isn't this shiny? Then Hazel asked him, Do you need me to move anything? Jeez, it was like they had a spell cast on them or something. Then Wesley looked at me and said, Maya, your friends have grasped the importance of keeping our living environment clean. So why can't you? Fine. If Wesley wanted me to change, then I would. Just not in the way he expected me to. It was time I took being messy to a whole new level. I started by moving things around. Then I rubbed the initials out on his can of soda and wrote on my own. Then I settled down for an afternoon watching a movie on the couch. My feet up on the upholstery, of course. Yep, I also dropped popcorn all over the place. I couldn't help but giggle as I heard Wesley's disgruntled moans coming from the kitchen. Then I heard a cupboard slam and he appeared in front of me. Maya, that's mine. He picked the soda can off the floor and examined the altered initials. And this goes on a coaster on the table. Ugh, I can't stand it anymore. He swatted my legs down. I'll be your cleaner, but I'm charging you for it. Sure, Wesley, if that's what you want. I smiled before I threw a piece of popcorn into the air, and it missed my mouth and landed on the couch. He muttered under his breath as he picked it up and marched over to the trash can. Hey, this could be fun especially as I had no intention of making it easy for him. I left a trail of candy wrappers around the house, dropped crumbs on the couch, and purposely didn't take my sneakers off at the door, so I got mud clumps everywhere. It was so funny watching him squirm as he cleaned up after me. Then one time, when I knew he was in an online work meeting, I barged into his room and dropped an armful of my dirty laundry on his floor, then fled. He was so mad, but couldn't move an inch since his boss was talking. Then suddenly, I got a phone call. Weird. It's from a guy at the law firm I'd worked at. Turns out, they're short-staffed and asked me to come back to work until they find someone else. But you know what? I was too sick of that job, so I politely declined the offer. But suddenly, he yelled at me with words like, Don't be so full of yourself. You should have been grateful for this offer because I don't think you'd be able to survive one day in the world out there. You're irresponsible, unorganized, and lazy. Have fun being jobless. Then he hung up, leaving me speechless. I felt so terrible. Tears streamed down my face uncontrollably. I'm sorry about earlier, but I'm really not in the mood right now, Wes. I mumbled upon seeing Wesley walk into my room, probably to scold me about the pile of laundry. But instead... 
He sat down next to me, passed me a tissue, and told me that I may be the messiest girl ever, but I deserved better than that shitty job and shitty boss. Trust yourself. I know there's more to you than this. And maybe, if you find the right job that you're passionate about, who knows? You can even become the most organized and diligent girl ever. He teased me to brighten up the atmosphere. Okay, so maybe Wesley wasn't all bad? After that, I decided to try and be a teensy bit tidier from now on. But not too tidy. Later on, he stuck a post-it note to my door saying he wouldn't be cleaning up after me tonight, as he was going out. I asked the girls where Wesley was, and they looked disappointed, as they said he went out all dressed up and mentioned something about a date. Why did I feel a knot in my chest at the thought of Wesley on a date with some other girl? I couldn't like him, could I? Nah, how could I like someone that particular? I watched a movie to push away those strange feelings, and then went to bed. Only, I found myself unable to sleep. So at about 1am, I went and got a glass of water. That's when he returned. I asked him how his date went, and he looked really awkward, muttered something out about how she was just a friend, then lingered on the spot there for me to finish, so he could wash up my glass and put it away before he went to bed. Okay, so that was weird. The weirdness continued for the next week. Wesley continued to clean up after me, but he couldn't even meet my eye, and whenever I tried talking to him, he ignored me then hurried off. Then, one time when I was in my room, I heard footsteps by my door. I knew it was him with one of his dumb notes again. So, I pushed open the door to see him standing there, red-faced, then shouted at him, Why are you avoiding me? He blushed and looked at the note he just stuck to my door. Quickly, I read it. I'm sorry I've been avoiding you. The truth is, you're the messiest girl I've met in my whole life but I still can't stop thinking about you. W. What? Did he like me too? I pulled him into my room to talk about this, but he looked at the mess and shook his head. That doesn't live there. He gestured to the coat thrown on my bed. Give it a rest. I rolled my eyes before I pulled him closer to me and kissed him. And we've been together ever since. As much as it pains me to say... It turns out that this messy girl can't live without her cleaning-obsessed guy. But then they do say that opposites attract. Who knew that bonding over post-it notes and spoiled pizza could lead to something more? Hey, Sally here. I'm 25 years old, and I love makeup. I mean, I really love it. I don't even answer the door barefaced to the postman. My fascination with makeup started back when I was just a little kid. My mom was a famous beauty blogger and even created her own cosmetics brand. Everyone from renowned models to Hollywood actresses wanted to use her products. Back then, the industry was different. It wasn't about YouTube and different media channels. Instead, people like my mom had to take different avenues to promote their products. I remember how amazing it felt to walk into a drugstore and see my mom's makeup on the shelves. But then, my mom's world came crashing down, and it was all thanks to one lame model. I knew something was up when my dad picked me up from school. He barely ever picked me up. Mom always did. And weirder still, he didn't say a single word to me. Then, I walked into our house to find mom standing in front of the mirror as she smeared makeup all over her face. My mom was a glamorous, perfect-looking woman. I'd never seen her look or act like this before. I remember just staring at her, not knowing what I should do or say. Then she started crying, which caused the makeup to streak down her face. I remember thinking that she looked like a scary clown. She seemed so out of control. In a harsh tone, my dad said to her, Will you just look at yourself? How can you let Sally see you like this? Then he covered my eyes and pulled me out of there. I asked him what was going on, and he sighed and told me how a model had a bad reaction to the products during my mother's live webcast, and now she was getting treatment at the dermatology hospital. She blamed it on my mom's cosmetics products, which meant that both the press teams and police were now involved. Now the beauty industry was boycotting the range that my mom had worked so hard to create. The next day after school, my mom seemed to be in good spirits. She took me for a milkshake, and we sang along to Disney tunes in the car. 
I thought that everything was back to normal, but then we arrived home and she sat me down and said to me, Sally, you're going to be my model and save this family. Then she filmed herself applying her makeup products on me. She turned to the camera and said, See, I dare to use my products on my daughter's delicate skin because I know there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. The problem is that footage of a young girl having her makeup done is boring in comparison to the shocking pictures of a famous model with burned skin. All the brands turned their backs on her and she went from super successful entrepreneur to blacklisted overnight. An investigation later proved that the model's skin damage was due to dangerous fake Botox injections, not my mom's products. But this was too little too late, as my mom had already lost all her deals and partnerships, and the money spent on pricey lawsuits made my family bankrupt. After that, mom left the beauty industry behind her. But that afternoon changed my life. I always felt a sense of self-esteem as growing up in an environment full of famous beauties. But that day, after being put on makeup by my mother, I felt so pretty. I looked in the mirror and found myself like all the dream girls I'd seen from my childhood. My new beautiful appearance made me more confident. Since then, I started practicing makeup and this obsession doesn't stop until I grow up. By the age of 14, I wouldn't be seen leaving the house without a full face of makeup on. It gave me this added layer of confidence and made me feel ready to face the day. When I had my makeup on, then it didn't matter as much that my parents were now poor. I looked and felt beautiful, and I could handle the world. Now at 25, I still adore makeup. I'm a self-confessed makeup addict. Even my boyfriend, Chris, had never seen my bare face. When I stayed over at his, I went to bed with a full face of makeup on. Then I waited until he'd fallen asleep so I could sneak into the bathroom and take it off and moisturize. Then I woke up two hours before he did, just so I could apply my makeup, then get back into bed and look like I'd just woken up that glamorous. Yes, keeping up appearances was hard work, but when he looked at me like I was the most beautiful girl in the world, well, that made it so worth it. Only on one occasion, Chris woke up early and walked in on me doing my makeup. I totally freaked out and immediately covered my face with my hands and screamed out, No, don't look at me. I'm hideous. He laughed and said, Don't be silly. A bit of makeup doesn't change the fact that I love you and think you're the most beautiful girl in existence. This was sweet and all, but I still shouted at him until he left the room so I could finish off my makeup. His words got me thinking, though. Did he really, truly love me? We'd been together for two years, yet he'd never ever seen me fresh-faced. So how could he possibly know if he loved me if I wasn't wearing it? I couldn't stop thinking about this. I needed to know if he truly loved me for me or not. So I took all my makeup off. Yep, even my clear lip gloss. Then I tied back my hair and put on casual clothes and a pair of sneakers. I was standing right behind him at his favorite cafe. I hesitantly went to the table where he was sitting and was confused as to how to speak. That was when he looked up at me while still scrolling through his phone and said, Yeah, you can take that seat as I'm leaving soon. He didn't recognize me. Interesting. I sat down in front of him, pretending to be a shy, cute girl, and softly starting up a conversation. I tried varying the tone of my voice to ask what I should order, and it worked. He completely thought that I was just some random girl. After we chatted for ages, I said to him, I see you don't really have to leave soon, huh? He smiled and complimented me on being cute. It made me feel a lot more confident. So by then, I had the courage to tell him that I was his girlfriend. But suddenly he grinned and said, If you don't have a boyfriend, I wonder if I have a chance to get to know you? What? He was still in a relationship with me? Unbelievable! Well, another plan just popped up in my head, so I tried to stay calm and replied coyly, I'd like that. After that, I started living two different lives. When I put my makeup on and become energetic and attractive, Chris complimented me on how beautiful and charming I was and proudly showed me off to his friends. But when I appeared with a bare face and acted all coy, he said that he loved how sweet and rustic I was and that he thought girls who wore makeup all day were tragic. Tragic? How dare he? He would lie about going out with friends so he could spend more time with makeup-free me. Then he kissed makeup me and told me how he loved how glamorous I was and how I was the only girl for him. Yeah, right. I couldn't believe how fake this guy was. There I was thinking he loved me, but now he was cheating on me with me. A playboy like him didn't deserve any version of me. So 
It was time for revenge. So, when he asked makeup for me to go on a trip, I shyly accepted. I knew he just wanted to trick an innocent girl into bed with him. But I'm not an ordinary girl anyways. As he was chilling out in the pool, I shyly said I would take a shower and wait for him inside. And I swear I saw his eyes brightened like a magpie. I ran into the bathroom to turn the shower on. Then I left a trail of makeup free me's clothes and then snuck out into the room nearby that I'd booked for the night. There, I transformed into makeup me, then got back ringing the doorbell. Obviously, he had to hurry from the pool to open the door, and when he saw me, he turned so pale. I walked in without his welcome, calmly walked through the luxurious room, and picked up every trace of adultery I'd previously scattered on the floor, the sundress, the bikini, and even lingerie. Then I threw them at him. He was unable to say a word and got panicked when I kept walking straight to the toilet, where there was the sound of a shower pouring water, calmly saying, the person I need to hit is inside, isn't she? He panicked and ran in between me and the door. It's not worth your action, honey. She's nothing. You know you're my only one. I asked him, is she beautiful? Nah, she's boring and old-fashioned. Not like you. I pushed him away and opened the door to enter. He panicked, jumped right behind me and froze when his mistress was nowhere to be found in the hot shower steam. He probably thought she somehow escaped herself and, at least, saved his life. I still walked in, undressed, and put a bathrobe on myself right in front of him, then walked over to the mirror and started removing my makeup. He was still so bold and shameless. I completely had you fooled. There is no girl. This is my plan to bring you here. Let's enjoy the night, babe. He really had a talent for lying. I just silently removed all the makeup on my face. I've never seen you remove your makeup. Tonight will be really great, he said, as he walked over to hug me from behind. I finished by tying my hair up and wiping the steam on the mirror with my hand and said, So, who do you want to sleep with tonight? He looked up into the mirror to see another me and screamed in horror, running away as if he'd seen a ghost. That night... I gloatingly stayed in that luxury hotel room and enjoyed the first day of my single life. Makeup is my passion and hobby, and I won't change it for anyone, especially for that kind of guy. But I now realize that I deserve to find a guy who loves me unconditionally, whether I'm the glamorous, makeup-covered version of me or just plain, coy, makeup-free me. Is it usual for you to sit on strangers the first time you meet them? This jerk! I'll show him that he's messing with the wrong girl! It's fine! Please don't hit him! Don't worry. And this is for mugging a kid! No, no, you have got it wrong! He just saved me from those muggers! And he was just teaching me how to fight back at them! Oh my, I thought... It was just because the boy's bag was on the ground and that guy was holding his arm like he was about to hit him. I awkwardly stood up, literally screamed out to apologize, then ran straight home. So, as you can see, my home's a little different from the usual. My parents run a nursing home, so I grew up surrounded by the elderly. You were so embarrassed that you left him laying there and ran away? The first time I met my husband... I also knocked him over with my dolio chagi. Perhaps this boy is your destiny. Poof! No way, Mrs. Jones. Suddenly, my dad huffed past us. Oh no, I know that look. Something was bad. Lately, our finances haven't been so good. I went after him to check he was okay and found him talking to a man in the yard. On seeing me, the strange man waved me over. Do you know this person? Huh? That was the guy I almost punched earlier. That's right. The person you almost knocked out is my son. I saw everything, so I followed you here. He's got in with a bad crowd and lost focus on his studies. I want you to steer him in the right direction. I... I don't want to be a babysitter. I'm sorry. It's too bad about this nursing retreat, isn't it? Seems like it'll have to close soon. Although, if swayed, I don't mind being a major sponsor. <gasps> this was insane! So, 
all I needed to do was keep an eye on his son, and all the nursing home's problems would be solved? Dad said I didn't have to do it if I didn't want to, but how could I say no? Okay, I'll do it. So, which school am I transferring to? Jeez, everything here was so shiny. But if I had a choice, this would be the last school in town I ever wanted to attend. I entered the classroom and walked over to the only empty seat that happened to be at the back. I was about to sit down, then... Ah! Some dude pulled the chair aside and caused me to fall onto my butt. A hand appeared to pull me up, but as I went to grab it, it immediately drew back, leaving me sitting there embarrassed while everyone's laughing at me. Oops, sorry. I guess I should only give a hand when asked, right? Ugh, it was Blake. I quickly regained my cool face, sat down, and put on my headphones, pretending like I didn't hear any of those comments from other students about my rustic look. This girl seems interesting. The usual. A grand if you can win her heart in a month. Deal? Blake glanced at me and sneered at the guy. Easy. Deal. So that's how it's gonna be, is it? Luckily, I hadn't turned my music on yet, hence why I heard the whole conversation. Let me help you get some extra pocket money then, Blake. And it didn't take him long to start implementing his plan. At lunchtime, he enthusiastically led me to the canteen, guided me to get food, and even asked the lunch lady to get me an extra portion of yogurt. Nice try. I was trying to enjoy my lunch when a shrill voice sounded out. Get up and get me some food. I want a cupcake just like yours. Now! Jeez, why did some girls think it was okay to treat guys like this? Frustrated, I went over there, picked up the cake from that boy's tray, and shoved it into her mouth. There, happy now? Poor thing, your arms must be so broken that you can't get food yourself. Let me feed you then. You're welcome. Are you crazy? You're dead meat today. She raised her hand about to slap me, but I quickly dodged, causing her to fall to the ground. As for me, I calmly sat down next to the boy and had my lunch. Sorry for wasting the cake. You can have my yogurt if you want. He's Kai, my first friend at this new school. He's witty, smart, and has a seriously impressive academic record. He was actually here on scholarship, which explained why he didn't quite fit in, just like me. I noticed how Blake seemed rather annoyed and kept staring at me. I bet he was just fed up with being teased by his friends, since I just totally ignored him. Oh, but he didn't give up that easily. The next morning, he showed up at mine to pick me up, but I'd rather run two laps around the schoolyard for being late than share a ride with you. Then at school, he tripped me up and then reached out his hand pretending to help. But between you and the floor, I picked the floor. He even waited for me at the school gates with a huge bouquet of roses. But I just took one look at them, then started coughing. Are you allergic to flowers? <coughs> nope. I'm allergic to immature and boring people, like you. Then I walked off. Ugh as if every girl was going to fall for these lame tricks. This carried on for the next few weeks, but then one time, he approached me in the library while I was studying with Kai and handed me a necklace. I looked at it, then passed it back to him and turned to talk to Kai. Seriously? You're turning me down for this nerd? Kai's smart, gallant, and sophisticated, unlike you. All you are is a troublemaker. Are you looking down on me? Oh, finally. I was wondering how much longer would it take for you to figure that out. Not to mention, you've not helped once with the English Lit essay. You're in my group, but you probably just think the Grapes of Wrath is a rock band or something. So, if I can finish that essay on my own, will you go on a date with me? Fine, but it has to score an A, else you can forget it. And my trick worked. Blake actually completed the essay on his own. He's smart, but he's neglectful of his studies, and it's made him make mistakes. On being handed back the essay, Blake's face fell. He got a B, and even though he knew it was over, he still stayed in class to reread the teacher's comments. It seemed like this was the first time he actually put in the effort to do something. 
<laughs> What's wrong? Still in denial of your failure? Blake turned away without looking at me. The rich boy who lost the game for the first time looked so cute. So I put a gift with a message in it on Blake's desk. Needless to say, he was over the moon. In it was a set of clothes I'd bought for him and an invitation to a bar at the weekend. Why, you wonder? Oh, you'll see. That Saturday night, Blake showed up in the outfit I had gifted him and looked anything but pleased. <laughs> I can't come in wearing this. It's so old-fashioned. My friends will laugh at me. You invited your friends, too? To prove that you won the bet, right? If you get that thousand dollars, will I have a share? You already knew it? I was just joking at first, but now... Let's go inside now. Don't worry, we won't be here for long. I dragged him inside, and immediately, his friends didn't miss the opportunity to tease me. Did the fish get hooked? Yes, I'm trapped. Quickly give him a grand. His family is bankrupt and in dire need of money. Huh? What? You're lying. Look, he's wearing donated clothes. Even his branded clothes have been liquidated. I winked at Blake, and he immediately reacted. Lend me some money. I need a place to stay, a sports car, and pocket money too. At this point, his friends turned nasty and told him he no longer qualified to be in their group. You didn't have to do that. I already knew they only hung out with me for the money. But that's what people are just like. <sighs> Why would he think that? He must have never been cared for and loved properly. Get rid of that face. This is a date, after all. Let me make it up to you. A bar that matches this outfit. So I dragged Blake to our evening party. I told everyone that I brought a friend to lend a hand, and the elderly immediately made him do all sorts of things. Mrs. Hastings asked him to climb the tree to hang the string lights. Mr. Derbyshire called him to chop wood for the campfire, and Mr. Shaw wanted him to taste his homebrewed beer. Then the next second, Blake's already sitting on the drum throne. Huh, <laughs> it's been a long time since we had a young volunteer. That boy seems fine, doesn't he? I saw the way he looked at you. He's not suitable for me. I shrugged in response to her and suddenly felt disappointed. Yes, I liked this different side to him, but we were still from different worlds. The next morning at school, I still saw Blake hanging out with his greedy friends. Looks like he hadn't learned his lesson. Frustrated that all my efforts were in vain, I swung open my locker. Hmm, what was this note? Meet me at the library at 6 p.m. when everyone has left. I have a surprise for you. B. I shouldn't be like this, right? Waiting for him at the library for hours until everyone left? Nervous and excited? But as soon as the last person left, the lights suddenly went out, and the library door slammed shut. What's happening? Could it be that the note wasn't from Blake? I screamed out of fear. That's right. I may excel at martial arts, but I hate the dark. With a shaking hand, I dialed the phone to call Blake, and then slumped down in fear and sobbed. At that moment, the sound of the door unlocking startled me. As soon as the door opened, I quickly ran to hug Blake. Are you okay? I can't believe Chloe did this. I told you not to get near them. Huh? This wasn't Blake's voice. Freya, are you okay? Oh my god, it was Kai who opened the door to save me. But I thought that... I quickly let go of him, then ran away in embarrassment. That's strange. When I was in danger, the first person I thought of was Blake. Could it be that I... really liked him? At that moment, the phone rang. It was my dad. Mrs. Jones had suffered a heart attack and needed surgery immediately. But the surgery cost was so much. Where could we get that money? Ah, oh, yes. Blake's dad. So I called him. Hello, is this Mr. Morris? Blake stopped hanging out with his friends and did his homework. I really need the money now. Please, it's urgent. Are you bringing me out to trade with my dad? My God, it seems like Blake heard all the conversation. 
I... I... So, I'm just your money-making tool? And all this time you've trained me as your pet? It's not like that! We'll talk later. There's no time for your selfish thoughts right now. I gotta go! I ran like crazy to the hospital. My parents were desperate, and the money hadn't arrived yet. So I called Mr. Morris again. You said Blake had changed. If this is the case, then why did he just get fined for speeding and resisting police? Don't ever call me again. Don't worry, Freya. I'll sell the nursing home land to take care of Mrs. Jones. Everyone's agreed to move to the government nursing home. We sold our house, and now we live with Mrs. Jones in a new town. She's so much better now, but I do miss the other elderly people. Also, I miss Blake. I still keep in touch with Kai, and he told me that Blake has gone to some military school like his dad wanted. Well, that's unexpected from him. You should talk to that guy. Not about what you did, but confess your feelings to him. That will save you from regrets later. Then she patted me on the shoulder to comfort me. But I really don't have the courage to do it. I was feeling guilty. Mrs. Jones, you have a letter. Freya, look, it's the invitation to a nursing home concert. It's our concert, isn't it? Trembling, I took the invitation. What is this? I pushed Mrs. Jones's wheelchair to the door of the nursing home named Sunflower. When we walked in, we all burst into tears. Everyone was there. This is all Blake's doing. He's such a kind boy. He found us and built us a dream nursing home. You and Freya were the surprise gift we prepared for him, but as soon as he saw the two of you, he ran away. Hearing that, I rushed to the gate. A car passed me. My gut told me it was him. I ran after it and shouted in despair, Blake, wait! I like you! I really like you! But the car quickly went out of sight. I helplessly slumped down on the street, tears streaming down my face, and I still muttered, I really do like you. What are you saying? Say it louder. I turned around startled. It was Blake. He was in his military uniform and smiling at me fondly. It was a normal Monday morning. I was standing by my locker when this Layla girl walked over, leaned against the locker next to mine, and talked to me in this sultry voice. Hi, handsome. Do you have any plans after school? I looked around in confusion. Huh? Was she talking to me? Usually girls like Layla didn't talk to guys like me. I mean, come on, look at her. She's the hottest girl in school. While I'm Felix, <laughs> just your average looking nerdy guy. I awkwardly replied, Oh, hi, uh, I'm just doing my homework after school. Bye. Then I left her there dumbfounded. But it didn't end there. At the end of school, she approached me again and asked, Do you want to hang out with me? Followed by a wink. Uh, no thanks, uh... I really have to finish my paper on the French Revolution. Then I walked off. Man, did she really want to hang out with me? <laughs> no way. She must have lost a bet or something. Even on the next day, Layla, one more time, made a beeline for me with this scary, determined look on her face while I was chatting with my friends. And in a serious tone, she said, Look, Felix, do you want to be my boyfriend? What? All my friends started to cheer. I was so embarrassed that I shooed them away to get some privacy with Layla. Um, I'm flattered, but no. She scowled at me. Excuse me? Do you realize that I'm Layla Hall, the prettiest and most popular girl in this entire school? Not to mention a member of the cheerleading team? Ugh, cheerleaders are so dramatic. I calmly replied, sorry, but you're just not my type. She shouted back, what? I'm everybody's type! I just shrugged and left. My god, that was awkward. But at least she got the hint now, right? Well, wrong because that's when the trouble just began. Firstly, it was this flood of junk emails and newsletters, then strange phone calls from the spa nail salon, asking if I had made appointment for the day, which I obviously didn't. On top of that, there's a fake Facebook account that started spreading unflattering pictures of me around, picking my nose in French class, pulling this weird tongue-out concentration face as I checked over my essay. 
There was even a slow-mo clip of me chewing like a camel as I enjoyed my burger. Man, I was an ugly eater. While I was scrolling through these pics, Layla jumped out at me with a big smirk on her face. Be my boyfriend, then the pranks will stop. Right, uh, of course it was her. Didn't she have better things to do? I shook my head and said, no thanks. This still beats being with an annoying girl like you. Then a few days later, as I walked into school, I noticed that everyone was giving me dirty looks. Was my shirt inside out or something? Nope. So what was the problem? I asked some of my friends and, geez, Layla told everyone that I kissed her, then ghosted her. She's a real-life Harley Quinn. Hot, but totally crazy. Only a lunatic like the Joker could love her. I'd had enough of her antics. I couldn't let her make me look like the bad guy for something I didn't do. So, at lunch, I charged over to her table and yelled in her face. Are you crazy? Why can't you understand that I don't like you? Then I shouted so everyone could hear me. Hey, listen, this rumor about me kissing and ghosting Layla is a total lie. She made it all up because I refused to date her. So please, save your dirty looks for someone else. Thank you. Layla shoved past me and ran out of there. Ugh, okay, maybe I was a little harsh. But you'd brought it on yourself, princess. Then, during French class, she was absent, but no one knew where she went. Was it maybe because of me? Nah, probably not. But as I was walking home, I spotted her sitting alone on a swing in the playground. Just go, Felix. This girl only brings trouble, I thought to myself. But oh man, she looked so sad. So the next thing I knew, I was walking over and sat on the swing next to her. I asked, why weren't you in French class? Just leave me alone. Stop pretending you care. Look. I took a deep breath, then continued. I'm sorry for yelling at you in front of the whole school. That that wasn't cool. But what you did to me wasn't cool either. Shall we call it even? Layla stayed quiet for a bit, but then she nodded and smiled at me. Well, that wasn't so bad, right? So from then onward, everything was fine between us. She even smiled at me in the hallway. Whenever I saw Layla, this warm feeling came over me, and I couldn't stop grinning. Once, I even spent my entire lunch break trapezing around school just so I could catch a glimpse of her face. Oh boy, I think I've fallen for Layla. But why now? I tried to ignore these feelings, hoping they'd eventually go away. But then Valentine's Day came along and Layla, being the popular girl she is, received enough roses to open a florist. Ugh, how annoying. I needed to do something. So after school, I went to her house with some chocolates and a teddy bear. As soon as she opened the door, I blurted out, I know I'm a big dumb idiot. Rejecting you was a huge mistake. Please, will you be my Valentine? I stood there red-faced and prepared for rejection. But she just snatched the gift out of my hands, then said, Yeah, okay then. Oh my god, I couldn't believe it. Me, your regular nerdy guy, was dating the most popular girl in school. Love is really unpredictable. I was amazed at how open she was to my nerdy stuff. She even watched The Mandalorian with me and cooed whenever she saw Baby Yoda. But the one thing that didn't gel so well between us was, yep, you guessed it, studying. Layla didn't seem to care about her grades, and I didn't want her to fail, so I offered to be her tutor. But she was constantly yawning and staring out of the window whenever we started studying. Felix, I have an idea. Why don't you do my homework for me? In the meantime, I can go to cheerleading practice as we have an important contest coming up, and it means the world to me, just like your math quizzes do to you. What? Was she serious? My God, I hated cheating like this. But she gave me that puppy-eyed look, and me being the sucker I am, I agreed. Thanks, Felix. You're the best. She kissed me on the cheek, then immediately passed me a huge pile of homework. I asked her why she had so much, and she explained that because she didn't understand it, she let them pile up. But hold on, why did she have Spanish? She was in French class with me, not Spanish. But she just shrugged and said her parents forced her to study it outside of school. Oh, my poor little pumpkin. One day, like usual, I stopped by her place to pick up her homework, but she wasn't home. That was odd. Today wasn't cheerleading practice, so where could she be? I looked through the stack that she asked her mom to give me and saw some Spanish worksheets. So I said to her mom, Oh, she must be in her Spanish lesson, right? Her mom looked a bit confused and laughed. <laughs> you know Layla. She's far too stubborn to agree to extra classes. Huh? So the papers weren't hers? Then whose it was? And why? Suddenly I felt this uncomfortable feeling itching under my skin. I decided to confront her later at school. Then the next day I was walking through the hallway looking for Layla when I suddenly heard some guys cheering, something about getting an A in Spanish. Wait a minute, did he say Spanish? I turned to see who it was, and to my shock it was Hector, the captain of the soccer team. Hector was popular for being all handsome and everything, but also for sucking at school. Someone must have done his homework for him, and you guessed it, yeah, 
This someone was me. Ah, it all made sense now. Layla and Hector must be a couple. They may have been hot stuff, but they both sucked at studying. So she was using me to do both of their homework. It all made much more sense now. None of this relationship was real. It was all just an act. And no way was I letting them get away with this. I had a perfect plan to expose them. During lunch, I sat down at the table closest to Hector. Then I went into lovey-dovey overload with Layla. I fed her cheese fries, then I stroked her hair and loudly told her how soft it was. I quickly glanced over at Hector for his reaction, but nothing. He seemed more interested in her burger than her. Layla raised an eyebrow at me. Um, are you okay? You're acting really weird. I laughed loudly, then placed my arms around her, then said, well, um, it was actually more like shouting. Oh, because you're so cute! But huh? Why was there still no reaction from Hector? He and his friends even cheered, and on his way out of the canteen, he gave me a thumbs up. Layla didn't look phased at all either. Man, somebody call the Academy, because these two deserved an Oscar. My plan was a massive fail. Ugh, this was so frustrating. I fell silent, and Layla noticed and gave me this quizzing look. Something is definitely off. You're being really strange. Okay, if she wanted to know, then fine. So I blurted out. I know that the Spanish papers belong to Hector. You're together and you're just using me to do all your homework. I'm not stupid, you know. Nice meeting you, but please don't ever talk to me again. Then I left without saying a word. Well, that's the end of my story. A rather sad one, right? I would be lying if I said I wasn't feeling down about it. I truly do love her. (laughs) Whatever. I'm going to college in a few months and I'll get to meet a cute, geeky girl who won't trick me into doing some other dude's homework. (sighs) Oh, uh, sorry guys, someone's calling me. My god, it's Layla. What does she want? We're done. Stop calling. What? Fine. Promise you'll leave me alone after this? Okay, wait. I'm coming downstairs. Uh, Oh my god. Layla's at my front door and she insists to not leave unless I have a talk with her. Ugh. Don't move, everyone. I'll tell you every detail as soon as I'm back. Jesus, guys. You won't believe what Layla's just told me. The thing is that her cheerleading team had to practice a lot for upcoming contests, which means they couldn't study as much. Therefore, they had to find someone who was willing to do their homework so their grades wouldn't slip. That's when Layla came up with the plan to win me over as her boyfriend. The flirting, the pranks, <laughs> they were all part of her plan. That was the truth. But Layla didn't know about the Spanish worksheets because her teammate Harper gave them to her. Turns out Hector is Harper's boyfriend. Didn't see that coming, right? But I was still super mad at Layla because she still used me. Then Layla took out some papers and showed them to me. Huh? It was homework with all B's on them. Then she told me, okay, I admit that at first I didn't like you. I only approached you to take advantage of you, but then I actually fell for you as I got to know you better, okay? So I stopped giving you my homework and did it on my own. So, her feelings for me were real too? I couldn't believe it. Eventually I forgave her and now we're happier than ever. I must say, when Layla first talked to me, I thought she was this crazy girl like Harley Quinn who I could never like, but I was wrong. Turns out I'm the one who's crazy about her. So, I guess I have more in common with the Joker than I first thought. (laughs) I was casually walking along the hallway, just minding my own business, when I felt a cold breeze rush through the hallway. I turned my head to see, and oh, it was Natasha. I didn't mean to look her in the eye, but I did. Oh no, was she going to hit me? Panicked, I quickly glared down at my feet. My heart was thudding with fear, and inside my head, I repeated, Please don't hurt me, please don't hurt me. But to my relief, she walked past me. Phew! Hi, I'm Marcus, and you might be wondering why I'm so afraid of that girl, right? Well, there's a reason why her nickname is Silent But Deadly. She's the tallest girl in the school, intimidating, and she never utters a word. The school was full of rumors about her. Such as how the last kid who messed with her ended up in intensive care. Nobody, and I mean nobody, should ever look her in the eye. Not unless they want to end up unconscious. I definitely just had a lucky escape. Thankfully, not all the girls in my school were as terrifying as Natasha. Nope. Instead, there was this really cute girl named Naomi. She's beautiful, sweet, and gentle. Only, she's also super popular and is dating Nicholas, the captain of the basketball team. So I just kept my feelings to myself and carried on with my life. (sighs) But wait, where's my notebook? I guess I left it back in the science lab. So I rushed in there and, oh no, Nicholas was there and he was reading my notebook. 
I quickly grabbed it off of him, but it was too late. He'd already taken pictures of the song lyrics I wrote about my feelings for Naomi. Blast it! So let me get this straight. A nerd like you dares to daydream about Naomi? Uh, but we have a problem here. She's my girlfriend. Don't you know that? Uh, wait, it's not like that. I'll stay away from her, I promise. Nicholas gave me this unnerving look. Ugh, no good thing could ever come from a look like that. I braced myself for what he was about to do next. You have to do everything I say, else I'm going to ruin your life. Huh? Was he being serious? Judging by his devious smirk, yep, he was 100% being serious. I want you to ask Natasha out. Make sure you do it in front of the whole class. What? N Natasha? That scary girl? How could I... If you say no, the entire school will know about this. Then he waved his phone in front of me. Ugh, that vile Nicholas. But I couldn't risk my song being sent to everyone, so it looked like I had no choice. So the following day, I walked over to Natasha's desk and asked her, Natasha, um, will you be my girlfriend? The whole class was silent. Then they burst out laughing. She glared at me. Ugh, this wasn't good. I winced, preparing for the death punch. But instead, she led me out into a corner of the hallway. Then she gave me this weak smile, followed by a nod. Oh my god, did she just agree to be my girlfriend? This is crazy. It was completely beyond my expectations. But, whew, at least I was still alive, right? And that's how I ended up dating the scariest girl in school. She never spoke to me, not even a word. So I just helped her with her studies and carried her stuff around. We also exchanged numbers, but we only chatted through messages. Then one day when I was on my way to have lunch with Natasha, Nicholas strolled over to me and told me I had to take her to the cinema to catch this awful-looking rom-com, which didn't seem like her thing at all. But what other choice did I have? Nicholas' words were orders. So I asked her over lunch, and to my surprise, Natasha smiled, then gave me a big thumbs up as agreement. When I went to pick up Natasha, she was already waiting for me on her porch. She walked over with a notepad. Curious, I asked her why she had it, and she wrote, I won't be able to text you during the movie, so this will have to do. Yep, Natasha has always been different from everyone else, so I didn't ask anymore. During the film, I noticed Natasha was crying, so when it was over and we stopped for lunch, I teased her. I saw you crying during the movie. She slammed her notepad on the table after she wrote, I was not crying. I just laughed and took her home. Hmm, maybe she wasn't as scary as the rumors made her out to be. To be honest, she was also quite cute. <laughs> the more time I spent with Natasha, the more I started to warm to her. There was something I liked about her, even though we had only communicated through sticky notes. I was desperate to hear her voice, so I hatched a plan. When we were in the library on a study date, I picked up an old book and blew the dust in her face. She almost sneezed. But before she did, she placed her hand over her mouth and raced into the girl's bathroom. Then she returned wearing a mask. After that, I tried to make her laugh. I quickly took two pencils from the table and stuffed them into my nose and started making ugly faces. But Natasha just glared at me and handed me a note. If you continue to do these ridiculous things, there will be payback. Ha! Huh, no way was I giving up. So the next day, when I saw her by her locker, I rushed over to her and began imitating the voices of the minions. I thought it would definitely work this time, but no. Instead, she punched me in the arm. Ouch! Yep, I now learned that the rumor about her inhuman strength was not an exaggeration. So I just gave up and our relationship continued. Then one weekend, when I was at Natasha's house to study, I went down to the kitchen to get a drink, just as her mom returned from the grocery store. As I helped her unpack, we started talking. She told me about Natasha's love of collecting glass art, the pieces of which filled the house. Then her mom touched my shoulder and thanked me for making her daughter happy again. Oh man, this was awkward. Now I felt super bad. To divert the convo, I asked if Natasha talked at home, but she just smiled and replied, Natasha's such a quiet kid, right? Then she told me how it's because Natasha's always been taller than the other kids, but she has a squeaky voice. This led to lots of teasing, and once she got so upset, she pushed a boy over and accidentally caused him to have a nosebleed. Since then, people started to shun her, so she withdrew from herself and stayed silent. Hearing this made me feel so guilty. What I was doing was wrong, and Natasha didn't deserve this. 
Then her mom said something that truly shocked me. In middle school, this one girl named Naomi was horrible to all. The mean comments got so bad she refused to go into school for weeks at a time. Huh? Naomi? The same Naomi I know? No way! Confused, I told Natasha's mom I needed to leave and left her looking bewildered as I ran out of there. My mind was a mess. I had a crush on a mean girl. And I'm just as bad, if not worse, after what I did to Natasha. Then my phone rang with a text from Natasha. It said, Sorry if my mom said something she shouldn't have. You okay? I texted back. We need to talk tomorrow, please. So we decided to meet at her house the next day. Alone in her living room, I told her everything, including my notebook, liking Naomi and how Nicholas was blackmailing me. Natasha, please, you have to believe me. I'm sorry I did this to you. I saw the hurt look in her eyes. Then she threw a note at me and ran to her room. The note told me to get out, but before I did, I stood on the other side of her door. I don't expect you to forgive me, but I couldn't continue our relationship on a lie. Look, I like you, and I don't want to deceive you anymore. After that, I left, and I also texted Nicholas that I didn't care if he told everyone. I'm done being his puppet. The next day, I expected school to be intolerable, but to my surprise, nothing happened. Instead, I saw that Natasha was trying to sort out her locker. A crowd had gathered around her, and Naomi was taunting her. How does it feel to know that even your boyfriend likes me more? <laughs> he doesn't like you. Natasha carried on sorting out her books, but I could see that she was fighting back tears. Furious, I pushed past them all and told Naomi to stop. She just jokingly said, You know, if you wanted to date me, you could have just asked. You didn't have to spend so many months suffering with this giant scarecrow. You're right. I did like you back when I thought you were a nice person. But now I know the true you. You're a coward who only feels good when it's at the expense of someone's misery. And I can see why you target Natasha the most, because she has two things you'll never have, a true kind heart and a loving spirit. After that, I pulled Natasha away and told her how sorry I am. But she didn't even glance at me and just walked off. A few days later, after PE class, I was about to go to the locker room when a classmate, Dante, came up to me. Marcus, help me carry the PE equipment into the storage room, please. I have a stomach ache. He hugged his stomach, then hurriedly ran away. Without thinking much, I packed up the equipment and carried it into the storage room. As soon as I put it down, I realized that Nicholas, Naomi, and some guys from the basketball team were waiting there for me. Oh, well, Marcus, do you really like that weird Natasha? Didn't see that coming. Then the whole group burst into laughter. You have no right to say that to her. Take a look at yourself. Whoa, are you defending her? Then she turned to Nicholas. Babe, show him who's the boss here. Then she pulled out her phone and started recording. Nicholas smirked, then grabbed my shirt collar with one hand and reached out his fist to me with the other. I tried to struggle but couldn't get out. He was too strong. Knowing I was doomed, I closed my eyes and awaited his punch, but suddenly a loud shout came out. Stop! I opened my eyes to see Natasha and a teacher standing in front of the door. Turns out she overheard Dante bragging to some kid about Nicholas's plan. So she came to my rescue. I looked at her gratefully, but she turned away to avoid my gaze. Meanwhile, Nicholas hastily released my collar and lied to the teacher that we were just chatting. But of course, he didn't believe him and summoned them all to the supervisor's room. After that incident, Nicholas, Naomi, and the rest of the basketball team were suspended from school for two weeks. They deserved it. But who cares? I have more important things on my mind such as winning back Natasha. I knew that her birthday was coming up, and I remembered how she loved glass art. So I bought her a glass art figure of Cinderella's glass slippers, with a ticket to senior prom and a card saying, Thank you, and happy birthday. I know what you did doesn't mean you forgive me, but I want to be your real boyfriend. So I left you a ticket for senior prom. If you come and dance with me, then I know you'll give me another chance. If not, then I know that it's over. But remember, you are a special person and deserve the best. The night of prom came, and I was stuck there all alone, feeling like a fool. This sucked, but after what I did, it was what I deserved. I didn't want to stick around here without her. So I was about to leave, but then my classmate tapped my shoulder and gestured for me to turn around. OMG. It was Natasha in the most beautiful crimson red dress. She walked over to me and then reached out her hand to ask me to dance. And of course, I accepted 
As the song came to an end, she leaned in and whispered to me, Thank you, my hero. I can safely say that was the happiest night of my life, as it led to me having the best girlfriend ever. Oh, also her voice is actually really cute, although she does get annoyed with me when I tell her that. <laughs> it was just a regular school day, and I was sorting out my locker when suddenly I heard hushed whispers and noticed that everyone else was staring at something. Okay, so turns out it wasn't a something, but a someone. As this pretty girl strutted down the corridor like it was a runway or something. Ugh. Why was everyone gulping at her, rushing over to greet her, and sticking notepads in her face for her to sign? I hugged my books and muttered, Geez, there's nothing special about her. So, my name's Lily, and I'm just a normal girl. My family, yeah, they're normal. My appearance, normal. And my social status, well, that's just normal too. I coast through life, and that's it. Nothing exciting ever happens to a regular girl like me. Oh, how I long to be the perfect looking girls on Instagram. They're so flawless in their clear skin, stylish clothes, and glossy hair. But those girls were different. They were from different worlds. Oh well, at least I still had my books, my bestie Sarah, and my cute boyfriend Brian. But this all changed when Stacy rocked up at school with her perfect looks and her I'm so sweet and friendly routine. Yeah, right. So what if she had a prettyish face and a bit part in some TV show underneath the fake shine she was clearly not all that? I walked into English class to see her sitting at the desk next to mine. Ugh, great. I couldn't even get to my seat because everyone else was surrounding her, asking her dumb questions such as, What shampoo do you use? And do you get snack breaks when you film your show? Jeez, give me a break instead. Then, when I finally managed to sit down, she smiled at me and in this sickly sweet voice said, Hi, I hope it's okay I sit here. I'm Stacy. Yeah, sure. I forced a smile back, but on the inside, my anger was boiling over. Who did this girl think she was? So what if she was beautiful? I bet she only cared about her looks and never bothered studying. Yeah, everyone else would soon realize what a failure she was. Then, one time during recess, Stacy, the living Barbie doll, suggested we start a yearbook and now everyone's treating her like she's achieved world peace or something. Ugh, you know the worst part of it? I've been saying we should start a yearbook for years, but no one listened to me. And guess who received so many welcome cards and love notes that they fell out of her locker and obstructed the hallway? Yup, Stacy. Gosh, it's been like weeks already. When will these stop? I hated how she thanked everyone and blushed and ugh. I needed to be around a sane person who didn't think the sun shone out of her. She was everywhere. It made me sick. But thank God for lunchtime. It became the only peaceful time of the day for me when I could hang out with Sarah and not have to worry about Stacy. But ha, huh, what was this? What was that Barbie doll doing sitting at our table and talking to my best friend? I walked over there and placed my tray down next to Sarah. Oh, hi, Lily. Stacy just said the funniest thing. Great, I muttered under my breath. Lunch was an ordeal. Sarah ignored me and kept on asking Stacy dumb questions like, Is your co-star Kyle as handsome in real life? And how do you style printed skirts with a colored tee? Yawn! Later that day, due to a paint spillage in art, I was five minutes late out. Sarah had agreed to drive me home, but I went out to the parking lot. Her car wasn't there. Then I checked my phone and saw that she'd messaged me. Where are you? I can't wait anymore. I'll leave first with Stacy. See you tomorrow, X. What? Is she ditching me to give that phony a ride? We had been friends since childhood. How could she be fooled for Stacy's act and just throw away our friendship like that? Angry, I messaged her back. You abandoned me for Little Miss Popular? How could you? I get it. New one in, old one out. Well, thanks a lot. My phone buzzed with her reply. Lily, you know it isn't like that. You live up the road from school while Stacy lives much further away and she needed to get back in time to get ready for her filming schedule. Madder than ever, I quickly typed out my reply. What 
ever. It's too bad you'll always be a nobody in her eyes. And she's just using you for a free ride. Then I chucked my phone onto my bed. I'd had enough. Sarah had made her choice and it was to be friends with that fake over me. Sarah may have fallen into the Stacy trap, but at least I still had Brian, right? One afternoon, I was talking to him out in the schoolyard when Stacy tottered past. Even her try to hard walk was annoying. She smiled over my Brian, then she deliberately tripped up and dropped the books she was holding. I grabbed Brian's arm to stop him from going over, but he shook himself free from my grip and went over to her anyway. I watched him help her pick her books up, and then she blushed and squeaked out a thank you. She was the worst. When he walked back over to me with this big grin on his face, I couldn't take it anymore. So I blurted out to him, how dare you leave me to help her? He gave me a confused look. Lily, I was just helping her out. Yeah, right. You knew she dropped them on purpose to get your attention, but you went over there to her anyway because you think she's prettier than me. He sighed. You're being ridiculous. You know what? I can't deal with your selfish, jealous streak anymore. Let's just call it a day. We're done. Then he walked off. I stood there watching him, expecting him to cool down and come back. Only he didn't. This was all Stacy's fault. She'd stolen my best friend and my boyfriend. No more. It was time to show her that she wasn't so perfect after all. I scrolled through her social media pages for ideas, and it soon became apparent that she loves boys with toned abs who ride motorbikes. How predictable. I discovered this website where I could hire a boy to play with her heart, then ditch her. It's about time she learned how much it sucked to be undesirable and worthless. Ha! I found the perfect guy called Josh. He was 19, a gym addict, and he had a motorbike. Whoa, he was expensive, but it would be worth it, right? I arranged to meet him at the local coffee shop, and jeez, he was even more handsome in person. I wished I could use this money to actually make him mine. Sigh. So, the deal is, he's gonna flirt with Stacy, make her love him deeply, and then break up with her. The next Monday, I walked out of school to see Josh parked up to the school gate, holding his helmet and looking like he belonged in a movie. Naturally, every girl was staring at him, but he made a beeline for Stacy. Then, just one week later, I saw him picking up Stacy from the school. Whoa, I knew that. I knew I had chosen the right person. Josh was such a lady killer. They looked super close and I had to remind myself that he was just an actor and he was doing his job. <laughs> she was going to be so heartbroken. But a few weeks later and he was still picking her up. Huh? Why hadn't he broken up with her yet? So I called him up and asked him what was taking him so long. He replied that he would do it soon. He was just making her fall for him more before he did it. <laughs> Brutal. Only the weeks passed by and he still hadn't ended it. Then I was walking past the movie theater and I spotted them there, kissing. What? This was not the plan! Furious, I had arranged to meet him the next day at the coffee shop. He walked over and couldn't even meet my eye as he said, I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore. I will refund you as soon as I can. Um, why? Have you fallen in love with her or something? I said jokingly. There was a long silence. Then he looked down at the table and muttered out, Yeah, I have. Why was I the only one on the planet who saw how fake she was? Thanks to her siren ways, I lost my best friend, my boyfriend, and now my savings. This was it. I needed to confront her. The next day at school, I tried finding her, but she was nowhere to be found. Then, as I passed through the school garden, I saw her sitting there. Gotcha. It's time to tell her exactly what I thought of her. I stormed over to her and opened my mouth to speak. But huh? Why was she crying? When she saw me, she managed to smile and said, Oh, hi, Lily. Is there a chance you could help me? I stared at her with disbelief. Did she think I was under her spell and would do her bidding? But then I saw what she was crying about. In her hands was her English essay with a big F on it. So I replied, Um, why me? You're so smart. You answer all the questions in class correctly. I don't want to be judged on my bad grades. That's why I left my last school. The other kids call me a brainless beauty. I moved here for a fresh start and now I'm still failing. Okay, so in that moment, I realized that there were things I was good at. My grades were good and I was pretty great at remembering facts. I'd just been so blinded by jealousy that I lost focus on these things and only saw what I didn't have. 
None of this was Stacy's fault. She'd never actually done anything bad to me. I'd made it all up in my head because I was jealous of her. So I sat down next to her and said, No one's going to call you that because I'll help you study. You will? She gave me a hopeful smile and I nodded. Thank you so much, she flung her arms around me. So that's how Stacy went from being my enemy to my friend. She's actually a really sweet and kind-hearted girl. No wonder why everyone admired her so much. And I was wrong to judge her on her appearance and not give her a fair chance. She's still with Josh and she doesn't know that I hired him to break her heart. But hey, she now has a hunky boyfriend who adores her, so that could be considered compensation, right? Brian and I are still over, but thinking about it, maybe this was for the best. I know I overreacted, but he gave me up so easily. And well, I want to find a guy who won't do that. As for Sarah, I went around to her house with a bag full of her favorite candy and I apologized for being a jealous jerk. Luckily for me, she forgave me. Now, Sarah, Stacy, and I have become good friends. Sarah and I both help Stacy with her studies and she gives us fashion tips. And you know what? I've come to realize that I'm pretty after all. I just needed to discover my spark. So finally, I learned that no one's perfect. Perfection is just an illusion. The most important thing is that we feel happy with what we own and never stop improving ourselves. So just be you and let everyone else concentrate on being them. I walked into the cafeteria and gulped. The only free seat was next to Joanna, one of the weirdest girls in school. She was always sitting alone, and usually I'd avoid her because people said she didn't speak much and was totally shy. But somehow, I felt kind of sorry for her. I mean, how bad could it be? Well, famous last words. It was bad. I sat down with a smile, but she just glared at me and grunted, Go on then, throw me your worst insult. I was confused and said, Oh, no, I, I just wanted to sit here and say hi. Are you okay? Suddenly, Joanna started speaking at a million miles per hour, telling me that of course she wasn't okay, and that she had to see a therapist every day. Then she showed me all the pills she had to take, and said she had crippling anxiety. I was shocked. Overwhelmed with TMI, I felt uncomfortable and thought of leaving, but then she grabbed my hand and said, We're friends now, right? I've never had a friend in my life before. You're the first person I've really been able to open up to. Not even my parents know how hard it is for me. Whoa, I couldn't leave her now. I patted on her shoulder and told her I'd happily be her friend. I mean, it would just be spending some lunch together or grabbing a coffee at most. It'd be fine. However, Joanna's interpretation of a friend was slightly different from mine. Three days later, I got back from the library quite late, so I went straight to my room as usual and started changing, only to find Joanna right behind me as I turned around. I almost woke up the whole building with a scream of fright. Oh, hey, Rumi! She said with a big grin. What? This was insane. Um, Rumi? What do you mean? But she just laughed and said she'd felt very lonely in her dorm on her own, and seeing as I had a double room, she'd asked the dorm supervisor if she could move in with me. I guess it wasn't so bad. I mean, I got lonely too sometimes. So that night, we stayed up super late chatting. And to be honest... It was actually nice to have a roomie. We became quite close, and a few nights later, we were having a movie night. Joanna turned to me and said, Carrie, there's something I need to tell you. Oh no, surely there wasn't any more disturbing things left. How did this girl cope? But then she started blushing and said, I have a crush on someone. His name is Mitch. Oh gosh, I knew exactly who she was talking about. Joanna, he's bad news. He's a total womanizer. You're way too good for him. At least, that's what I said, but what I meant was that he was only into popular girls. He'd never go for a girl like Joanna. Joanna didn't take it well. 
You're jealous, aren't you? I bet you have a crush on him, too. Well, I confess, so he's mine. Huh, <laughs> you're welcome to him. I never fancy someone like Mitch. I'm not that kind of girl. Joanna then said she'd prove to me that she could win him over. I felt annoyed at her and just went back to watching the movie. For a second there, it felt like my life had way more drama than ever before, and I started regretting ever sitting at her table that day. Little did I know, it was just the beginning. A week later, I was hit in the face by a huge surprise. Joanna and Mitch started dating. I was lying there listening to music when I heard voices outside the door. I opened it, and there was Mitch walking off. He turned back to blow Joanna a kiss, and then you should have seen the smug expression on her face. Told ya, she said, laughing. Wow, cocky. But okay, I was happy for her. She was a woman of her word, but I was worried she'd get hurt. I didn't have time to tell her this, though, because pretty soon she was with him 24-7. He even came over to our dorm, and I was sick of listening to them kissing. They were disgustingly lovey-dovey all the time, and it quickly became exhausting. On Valentine's Day, he sent 100 balloons to our dorm, and I couldn't even get through the door. Could he be any more over the top? It wasn't even that romantic. But Joanna was smitten. It was painful to watch. But... Not as painful as seeing Mitch walking along the street holding some other girl's hand. I froze. This couldn't be. I quickly text Joanna asking her how things were going between her and Mitch. She replied immediately saying, all good, why? So I told her what I'd seen, but I got no reply. I rushed back to her dorm and asked her why she was ignoring me and if she was okay. But she just started shouting at me saying I was trying to ruin her relationship because I was jealous. Clearly, she didn't believe me. I told her I was telling the truth, but she just got up and left, slamming the door behind her. Things got really awkward after that. She ignored me in the dorm, ignored me in class, and wouldn't reply to any of my texts. And she still brought Mitch back to our room and kissed him in front of me. Eventually, I couldn't take it anymore and asked her to move out. But I didn't expect what would happen next. Joanna lost it. She started shouting, What's your problem? For the first time in my life, I'm happy and someone loves me. And there you are, trying to ruin this for me. And now you want to kick me out? It's not my fault you're single, Carrie. Maybe if you stopped being so jealous for a second... Someone would like you back. I couldn't believe her. I wanted to scream. She was the worst. And the next morning, it got even worse. I was sitting with some friends before class started when suddenly Joanna walked in and burst into tears. People ran over to her and asked if she was okay, and that's when my blood ran cold. She started saying how I'd been badmouthing her boyfriend and now I wanted to kick her out of our dorm. And then I heard my voice. I looked over, and she had her phone out and was playing a recording of our argument. Of course, she'd edited it to make me sound like the bad guy. Even my friends looked shocked, and Joanna told them all how I was a two-faced, good-for-nothing kind of girl, and that I loved to gossip about everyone behind their backs. I tried to explain to everyone that Joanna was lying, and that she was just angry. But everyone looked at me in shock. It was like they believed her. I was stunned. The next day, I noticed Joanna showing my friend some photos on her phone. They were screenshots of texts for me, but she'd edited them to create a total monster out of me. One time, Joanna had messaged me laughing about how my friend Valerie had the worst hairstyle ever, and I joked that she must have cut it by herself. And there was the message where Joanna talked about how Mitch said his ex, Anna, who was also our class president, must have been flirting with the economics teacher to get good grades. And I said, has Anna sunk that low? Not only having an affair with a married man, but basically committing academic fraud? I don't think she would do that, though. 
but of course, Joanna had cropped out the last sentence, and she didn't show her parts in the conversation either. By that way, I looked like the worst friend ever. I tried to tell them what Joanna was doing, but they were too hurt to believe me. But that's not all. You see, Joanna had sent these messages to the whole school. For the rest of the day, people were coming up to me and telling me I was nothing but a mean girl. And then at lunch, I went to sit in my usual spot with my friends, and suddenly they all jumped up and left me there alone. I could hear everyone whispering about me. And then the most popular girl, Amy, came over to me and said I was a disappointment to this college, and I didn't even deserve to be here. I couldn't hold back my tears, so I rushed back to my dorm. But standing there with her arms folded, blocking the door was the dorm supervisor. She said that she'd received reports about my behavior and that I had one week to move out of the dorm. I didn't understand. What had I done? Apparently, people had told her I wanted to get her fired. And then I remembered Joanna saying those exact words and asked me how she could report to the manager. So I'd sent her a text explaining how to report her. Oh my gosh, she'd even used that against me? This was too much. I went to find Joanna. I was furious. She was ruining my life. When I got to class, I planned to show everyone our full chat conversations, unedited. But I didn't get the chance because Joanna was sobbing hysterically, and everyone was comforting her. She was saying how living with me was torture, and that she had to take medication to deal with me. Enough! How dare you! I screamed. Why are you doing this to me? What did I ever do to you? Joanna, of course, started crying even louder, and everyone stared at me like they wanted to kill me. I walked out of there feeling completely empty. I'd lost my friends, my dorm, my reputation, and every last bit of dignity, all because of that snake. I still didn't know what I'd done wrong. The more I tried to understand it, the more everyone defended Joanna. It was useless. No one listened to me. Eventually, I ignored them all, moved out of the dorm, and acted like Joanna didn't exist. Fortunately, I made some new friends that loved and trusted me and never twisted my words. As for gossiping about me that everyone else still did, I learned to block it out. And then about four months later, I got an email from Joanna. I was shocked. She said, Carrie, I'm sorry. You were right all along. Mitch was cheating on me, and I should have listened to you. Please forgive me. I'm begging you. I'll do anything to make it up to you. I'll confess to everyone. Please, let's just be friends again. I miss you. Ha! Huh, not in a million years. I deleted the email right away. There was nothing that she could do to ever make it up to me. She'd ruined my life, and I was done with that toxicity. Good riddance. I was on my way to Julia's house for a study sesh when out of nowhere I found myself flying onto the ground. I was so stunned I didn't even see the ball that had hit me or the fact there was a cute guy rushing over to check if I was okay. He helped me up and apologized. Then he pulled a band-aid out of his bag. Oh my, who is he? I'd scraped my hand pretty badly, but I almost didn't mind because now I was face to face with a gorgeous guy. In fact, I was so busy staring at him and blushing that I didn't even notice Julia marching towards us. Um, what are you two doing? Turns out the cute guy was Callum, Julia's boyfriend. Ugh, Julia, of course. Every nice thing is always hers. I'm Jenny, by the way, and that lucky girl is Julia. She's the daughter of the richest guy in town, Mr. Walsh. We're supposed to be friends, but we honestly have nothing in common. I mean, my family is pretty poor. It's not our fault, though. My dad sadly passed away, and so it's just me and my mom trying to make ends meet. Julia, on the other hand, has a silver spoon shoved down her throat. But fate still brought us together. I know it's kind of wrong, 
but that night I couldn't stop thinking about Callum. He now, in fact, gave me motivation for the next study session with Bossy Julia, as maybe he would be there again. I even put on makeup and skipping on the way to her house the next day. But, well, it was all for nothing, because Callum was nowhere to be seen. Instead, I had to sit and listen to Julia go on and on about her trip to Paris. I pretended that I was okay, but actually, I always dreamed of visiting the city of light and gazing up at the Eiffel Tower ever since watching Emily in Paris. Dream on, Jenny. Anyway, Julia was incessant. She loved making me look like a fool, and even said, Aw, poor Jenny. Maybe one day you'll get to go to Paris. But until then, you can just look at all my photos. Honestly, why was she so cruel to me? Last year around my birthday, she'd even shown me a fashion magazine and asked me which dress I liked best. I thought she was buying gifts for me, but instead, she showed up at my party in the exact dress I pointed out. I couldn't believe it. She just winked at me and laughed, and I seriously wanted to scream at her. Anyway, after looking at about one billion Paris pics, Mr. Walsh appeared. He looked happy to see us sitting so close and studying together. If only he knew the truth, but I had to pretend I had a lot of fun with Julia and helping her study, at least for his sake. Mr. Walsh was a good friend of our family, and ever since my dad passed away, he'd been looking out for me, and was even paying my school fees. I couldn't let him down. But you know what? I actually started to get excited to go over to Julia's now, as the thought of bumping into Callum again gave me butterflies. I even got myself a new hairstyle, but he was never there and I always left feeling disappointed. Then one time, after school, it started to rain dogs and cats, and I had to run for it. Then suddenly, I felt an umbrella over my head. Guess what? It was Callum coming to the rescue. It was like something out of a romantic movie. He even offered me a lift home. My heart was racing so hard, I was afraid he'd hear it. I just sat there in silence, dripping rain all over his clean car. I even caught him looking over at me a few times and my heart felt like it was going to leap out of my chest. He pulled up at my house, so I was about to get out when he touched my arm and said, Can I get your number? I was confused. I mean, wasn't he Julia's boyfriend? He then explained that he was just hired to be her fake boyfriend so that all the flirty boys would get out of her way. Wow, I couldn't believe it. He asked me to keep it a secret, as Julia would end us both if this story got out. Okay, it all made sense now. That's why he never came over to her house. I felt so happy. Over the next few days, Callum and I chatted a lot on the phone. And then eventually, he asked me out on a date. We went to the fun fair, and right away he held my hand. It made me feel so special, and I never wanted him to let go. We were having so much fun. Then a familiar voice pierced the air. Well, well, well. Isn't that my dear friend, Jenny? I felt dread rush through my whole body. We turned around. And there was Julia and her girl gang all standing there with their arms crossed. Callum dropped my hand and rushed to Julia's side. It was all her, babe. You gotta see the messages she sent. She's been flirting with me for weeks. It's pathetic. Whoa, was he for real? A second ago he was about to lean in for a kiss. And now he was bad-mouthing me? How could he be so two-faced? I tried to explain to Julia but she wouldn't listen. She just called me a traitor in front of everyone and told all her friends to lock up their boyfriends in case I try it on with one of theirs next. I was devastated. Everyone was staring at me and judging me. Ugh, if only I could vanish into thin air right now. And as I was thinking about where I could escape to, a guy appeared, grabbed my wrist, and pulled me away. It was Stefan, the guy who lived across the road from me. I didn't understand why he helped me, but I was so grateful that he did. He walked me home and tried to cheer me up by saying how his mom used to love our bakery so much and that the carrot cake my mom made was his mom's fave. This made me smile, thinking back on all those happy times in our family bakery. When my dad had died, we'd had to sell it to pay off some debt, and life had become quite difficult. Luckily, Mr. Walsh was helping out, but after what just happened with Julia, I wasn't sure I'd be able to face him. The next day at school, everyone was staring at me. I couldn't even find a place to sit at lunch. What had I done? I'd ruined everything. And then it got worse. My phone beeped. It was Mr. Walsh. He said he was so disappointed in me and that I no longer needed to come and tutor his daughter. I wanted to cry, and at the same time, I felt so much relief. 
But then I read on and he said, I'm sorry, but I can't keep my promise anymore. I'll continue to subsidize your school fees, but you'll have to figure something out for college. Good luck. My heart plummeted. Not only had I been shunned by everyone at school and backstabbed by Callum, but now the door to college was being slammed in my face too. What would I do? My life was over. I felt so sick. I just walked out of the canteen and went home. I didn't dare go to school over the next few days. I was miserable. And just when I'd given up all hope... There was a knock at my door. It was Callum. What was he doing here? He said he was sorry for what had happened and that he missed me so much. Then he asked me if I'd be interested in being his secret girlfriend. What in the world? I was so angry. I wanted to slam the door in his face. But he was fast enough to catch my hand, which took me aback. At that exact moment, Stefan happened to walk past. Seeing me standing there with Callum, his face changed and he immediately walked away. Oh, no... I definitely couldn't let him misunderstand anything about me anymore. He's the only friend I had left. I yanked my arm away from Callum and chased after Stefan. I finally caught up with him and blurted out how I'd been feeling like the whole world was against me and that I didn't know what to do. He told me to calm down, then we went to sit on a bench in the park, as he let me confide everything in him. By the time I finished talking, I was on the verge of tears. Then he said, Listen, Jenny, you're better than this. Don't dim to fit in with those people at your school. Good people will see you for the real you. You're strong, and you can get through anything. I know you can. He was right. I was better than this. I didn't need to sink as low as Julia and her friends, and I certainly didn't need to rely on Mr. Walsh's money. I'd figure this out by myself, like I always did. So I applied for a part-time job at a coffee shop. Earning my own money felt so good. Suddenly I felt free. And I knew everything was going to be okay. But then one day when I was working, Julia and her gang came in. They still weren't over what happened. And in front of everyone, they brought up what I'd done to humiliate me. And they even recorded it. And I couldn't stop shaking. This was too much. That's when I threw a cup of coffee all over Julia and ran out of there. Julia shouted after me that she was going to tell my mom everything I'd done. Without a doubt, Julia really did it. She even sent my mom photos of me and Callum at the fair. And well, my mom didn't take it well. I rushed home to try and explain after mom yelled at me over the phone. But then I couldn't find mom anywhere. I called her phone and a man answered. He said my mom was in a hospital after she fainted? Oh dear good God! I got to the hospital immediately and found out that she had collapsed from shock. But thankfully she was okay. She had to stay in the rest of the day to be monitored. So I went to get us both a cup of coffee. That's when I saw him. Callum. He was in the ward next door sitting with some girl. I almost dropped the coffee out of shock. They looked close. I waited until he'd left, and then I went to ask the girl if Callum was her boyfriend. Well, turns out, they'd been dating for two years already. So he was triple cheating? The girl deserved to know the truth, so I took a deep breath and told her everything. She was so upset. We decided to get our own back. So the girl called Callum and asked him to come back. As soon as he arrived, we confronted him and got the truth once and for all. He was never Julia's real boyfriend. In fact, here's the shocking part. He was hired by Julia to pretend to date me and ruin my life. Apparently she was jealous of how much attention her dad gave me since my dad had died, and that her dad constantly compared her to me. He kept apologizing to his girlfriend, saying how much he loved her and that he only agreed to help Julia so that he could earn some money to help pay for her medical bills. I was stunned. Callum was so apologetic and said he'd come clean about everything. He posted it on the school forum to clear my name and to everyone to see the ugly truth about Julia. And of course, when Mr. Walsh saw it, he made her come and apologize to me. And he also apologized himself and offered to pay my college fees again. Do you think I accepted his offer? Of course not. I was standing on my own feet now, and there was no going back. I didn't need anyone's help. So you might be wondering how I could afford college. Surely not on my coffee shop salary, right? Well, after graduating high school, I realized how much I missed the bakery. That was where I truly felt happy. So I decided to study to become a pastry chef, and now my mom and I have opened a new bakery. I've never been happier. And there's one last thing I want to share. Oh, in fact, here he is. Hey, Stefan, I've made your mom's fave. Let's go surprise her. 
I couldn't stop smiling as Stefan took the carrot cake, kissed my cheek, and we headed for his car. Life is so much more simple now, and sweet, and I love it. Hello there, my name is Hope, and my life just became fabulous. My parents are from India, and they moved here when my mom was pregnant with me. Things were tough when I was a baby, but when I turned seven, everything changed. My father invented the super cool app that lets you detect diseases from your phone. So we became rich and moved to Beverly Hills. Kana, look, that mansion over there belongs to Rihanna. Oh my god, Rihanna is my neighbor for real? Eek! Man, Beverly Hills was paradise. But there was one little problem. I had no friends. We moved during the summer, so I had to wait three months to meet the kids at my new school. I was bored out of my mind in our mighty mansion. One day, I decided to go to the playground. There were so many kids playing and having fun. I tried to approach some of them, but they paid me no mind. So I decided to watch them instead from the top of the jungle gym. Hey, you there! Me? Duh! Who else is flipping around like a monkey up there? Um... Are you new? We're playing princesses! Come and play with us! Yes! I jumped down so fast I almost hurt myself. But that was how I met Meg and Becky. I was shocked to find out that Becky was my neighbor. Our houses were right next to each other, and I could literally talk to her from my balcony. Meg, on the other hand, lived at the end of the street, so we decided to meet up every afternoon and play till the sunset. Then school finally started, and we were an iconic trio. Becky was the prettiest girl, with blonde hair and teeth so perfect she didn't need braces. Meg was the cheeky, sporty one, a soccer prodigy, in her words, while I was the mysterious new girl, who was friends with two of the most popular girls in school. And things stayed great as we entered high school together. I was no longer the mysterious new girl. Popularity wasn't my thing anyway. I was just glad I found my place in the tech club. Hey, Hope! Meg's asking us to go to the mall this afternoon. You coming? Oh, I can't. My family's celebrating Diwali today. Diwali? That sounds exciting. Can I come? Um, we have never had non-Indians for Diwali before. But since you're my bestest friend, I doubt that my mom would mind. Yay! By the way, I have something for you. Here, whenever we're close, it will glow like this. Whoa! Did you make these? See, you're really talented. If you would, Becky, we've talked about this. Joining the tech club is enough for me. Now let's get going before my mom scolds us both. Becky came over immediately, and she was so excited. She helped us set up and helped me wear my sari, and even joined in the prayers. Everyone was happy to have her around. Diwali went great. My mother had the best time teaching Becky about the Indian culture. Later that evening, a heavy rain started, so Becky stayed for the night. We were having tea in the living room when I heard a loud bang on the door. I opened up, and it was Meg, soaked in the rain. Oh my god, Meg, are you okay? Becky said to wait for you guys at the park. I was waiting when the rain started. I went to her place and was told she was here all day. Why didn't you tell me? Oh no, Meg, I'm so sorry. I meant to text you, but I forgot. You forgot? We've been friends since we were in diapers, but the moment Hope showed up, you abandoned me. That's not true. What's that on your wrist? Hope's too? They're friendship bracelets. I can make you one if you want. So that's how you think of me all this time. Just a surplus? Meg, wait. She didn't stop, but walked straight into the rain, and everything changed from that day. We tried to make peace with her at school, but she acted like we were invisible for days, and even started a new clique with her soccer teammates. Poor Becky. She seemed so hurt. Well, well, if it isn't the lovebirds. Tell me, Becky, how does it feel being replaced? Hurt, right? We get it. You find new friends. No need to rub it in our faces. Ah, uh, Hope. Have you been shopping at Goodwill again? Are things good at home? I think the homeless person you borrowed this coat from needs it back. Remind us, Meg, does your mommy still need you to cut meat into little pieces before you eat? That was four years ago. How dare you? Was it? What about those bed accidents? Her minions cracked up. Even Becky couldn't contain her giggling. From that day on, Meg was determined to get on our backs. We figured out she must have been mad at us still, so we decided to keep distance every time we saw her. I finally got time for myself, but suddenly Becky came rushing in. Hope, I just saw the tech teacher put a sign-up sheet for the annual national tech competition. And guess what? I already signed you up. This is the year you'll kill it. Bex, you should have done that. I'm not ready. That competition is a cutthroat. What if I don't make it past the group stage? Well, you know what's worse? Not showing up at all. So you have to give it your all and create something. You can do it, Hope. No, you don't- Hello, ladies. Yuck. You again? Can't you see we're in the middle of a conversation, Charles? I'm not speaking to you. Hi, Hope. I saw your name on the sign-up. I know you're going to kill it. Stalker alert. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Even though I am doing this against my will- If you want, I could help you brainstorm. No! 
No, I'm good. I'll figure it out. When would you learn? Even if she was on fire and you were the last drop of water, she would still say no. Move on. You've been obsessed with her since middle school. It's not cute anymore. Becky, that's mean. Let's go. Becky later apologized to me and said she only wanted to help. Besides, the winner gets the prize of a whopping $80,000. I bawled my eyes out at the amount of zeros. That's it. I decided to give it my all for this one. I was working all night on designs, which made me so tired and cranky at school. But so far, I had nothing. One day, I overslept and was so late to school. I was running to catch the end of first period when I felt an arm grab me. Hey, are you okay? You look exhausted. I'm fine. Stop following me around, Charles. No, I don't want to hang out with you. No, I don't like you. Please leave me alone. Just then, the bell rang, so the hallway was filled with students, and they all heard what I said. Everyone was laughing at Charles. Tell him, bestie. We don't like you, Charles. Scram! I was about to apologize when he walked away in shame. Maybe it was for the best? I was getting tired of rejecting him every day. I had too much to work on. I had an idea for an app and knew that my family depended on it. In no time, I stopped worrying and started feeling confident. My app was indeed a masterpiece. One day at recess, I was in the bathroom stall when I heard the most disturbing things. Did you hear the thing about Hope? I heard that her father's app is a failure now and that they're so poor they might have to live in trailers soon. Yeah, I heard it. Who would have thought that high and mighty Hope used to live in a trailer? How tragic. <laughs> My head was spinning. My family problems were a secret. Who could have told them? That witch Meg? There's no way she would have known. Then it hit me. It was Becky. She was the one coming to my house all the time. That's why she enrolled me into this competition for the money. She knew. I could feel the anger boiling in me as I moved to find her. I saw her by the bleaches, sitting alone. Great. Becky, how could you? Before I could finish my sentence, a slap landed on my face. It stung so bad that I couldn't see. Don't ever come close to me again. Don't ever say my name. I don't ever want to see you again. What are you talking about? Ugh, I'm the one who should say that. You're seriously playing the victim after insulting me? She ripped her friendship bracelet off, threw it at me, and stormed off. The whole school watched as I stood in confusion. What the heck just happened? I tried to reach out to Becky, but it was impossible. She would cut me off. Was that how little she thought of our friendship? The next few days at school, everything started to make sense. <sighs> Becky had a new best friend, and it was none other than Meg. I was so upset watching them at school, while I sat alone every day. Later that day, I was in gym class when the witch approached me. Looks like you're flying solo now. Jesus, gloat all you want. I'm out. What's with that attitude? You usually have a sharper tongue. Cut your nonsense. I know you did this. You were so jealous of our friendship that you just had to destroy it. What? It wasn't me. Have you seen the video? What video? Meg showed me a video of me bad-mouthing Becky to a group of girls, but I didn't do this. I know. As much as I hate you, I know you'll never say anything bad about Becky, which means that someone did you dirty. Oh, I didn't expect you to pick my side, but you're so right. That person must have spread that nasty rumor about my dad's business and got me thinking Becky was responsible, since she must have been the only one who knew. Does this mean it's true? Yeah, I've been hoping to win the tech competition prize and help that out. Well then, you should focus on the competition. I'll talk it out to Becky, don't worry. You do that for me? Yeah, I guess I knew all too well what it felt like to be left out. I'm really sorry about that. It's alright. Beck and I made up. I guess I was a bit jealous, since it was always you and Becky. And we've never had a chance to hang out one-on-one -on -one either. I really hope all these drama can end so we could just be the iconic trio again. Thank you. I really hope so too. One week later, the tech competition was finally here. I was so ready to unveil what I had been working on. Mom and Dad were also here to cheer me on. I walked to write my name on the sign-up sheet, and the name before mine shocked me to my core. That's right. I'm here too. Oh, meet Evans, my partner. He's one of the most brilliant inventors. My parents hired him to help take you down. But why? Why? I've been nothing but nice to you, but you only think of me as some dumb blonde. I was the one who enrolled you into this competition. I was the one who befriended you. You'd be nothing if it wasn't for me. It's about time you learn to appreciate your friend. Becky turned away. Meg tried to stop her, but to no use. I suddenly felt this weakness in my knees. I couldn't help the tears. I let them flow freely. Oh, Kana. Listen, you have to focus. Remember why you are here. If we have to start our lives afresh, then no problem. I did it before, and I can do it again. Don't let her clouded judgment tell you where you belong, my darling. I gave my dad the biggest hug and went into the hall. He was right. I couldn't let Becky take this day away from me and my family. When my name was called, I walked proudly on stage and started my presentation. 
Hi all, I came here because I want to tell my story. Growing up, life hasn't always been easy for me, until I found friends who changed my life. And even if there are ups and downs along the way, I will forever cherish the memories we have together. So I came up with this idea of an app called Memoir Lens, made only for you and your loved ones, where you can store and share your memorable moments with them. Best part is the app will notify you annually, so you can relive those moments again. The hall erupted with applause. Everyone loved my app and I ended up winning the competition. I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. I saved my family. Later that night, my home was packed with friends and family celebrating. I was having such a good time. But then the thought of Becky and Meg crossed my mind. So I took a walk. I was just at the end of the street when Charles appeared from nowhere. Hey, I heard you won today. Congratulations. And you're having a party. Did you forget to invite me? Oh, um, it's just for my family and close ones, so... Oh, <laughs> I get it. Does Becky come too? I heard she slapped you in the face. Ouch, that must have hurt coming from your BFF for life. Do you see how it feels now? Nobody likes being humiliated. Wait a minute, it was you! You did this! Of course I did, moron. And let's be clear, it wasn't because I was so heartbroken. Yuck. I just wanted to date a popular girl. And you seemed... Easy. But then you humiliated me. So I created a fake AI video saying nasty things about you with Becky's face. And the same for her. And you guys fell for it. Look how weak and powerless you are without your friend. Pathetic. <laughs> with all the anger and pain I felt, I grabbed Charles by his shirt and slapped him silly. I was ready to beat him up, but he scampered away, laughing like a psychopath. I ran to Becky's house. I had to tell her the truth. I banged on the door for minutes before she opened it. It was Charles! He made a fake video to separate us because we humiliated him! What? Are you making this up to mend things? It's not gonna work. It's over. No, wait! She's not lying! I heard Charles confess. I even have it recorded. They happened to stand right in front of my house. Becky watched the video, and it started to hit her. Oh my god, that idiot! Oh, Hope, I'm so sorry! I should have listened to your side! And I said all those terrible things to you! Oh, I'm too ashamed of myself to even face you! It's okay, Becky! I just miss my friend! I also happen to know you pulled out of the competition because you couldn't do that to me and my family. I'm so sorry I even tried to! Then we both laugh away. Hey, Meg, why are you standing there dumbfounded? It feels like I'm third-willing, you guys. I'm just gonna head out so you guys can have your moment. What are you talking about? Meg, you're a part of this group, and this time we're not gonna let you leave. Yeah, if it wasn't for you, we'd probably still be fighting by now. So come here, you. I missed you guys. I'm sorry I was so mean. It's okay now. Now, how do we make that punny Charles pay? <laughs> Look at this gorgeous golden cruise. Isn't it perfect for my 16th birthday? <laughs> Here comes the most exciting part of tonight. Gifts, of course. All the guests lined up eager to hand me their presents. Mr. Robinson bought me this eau de parfum in a dainty gold bottle. Yep, approved. What's next? Ooh, a pair of Jimmy Choo's from the Mitchells? Gold, of course. Nice color, but the heels are far too low. What a bummer. I'll have to pass on this. That's right. Every single thing of mine needs to follow specific standards. Why, you ask? Well, my mom saw me as her beautiful angel deserving wonderful golden luxury since the day I was born with a silky blonde hair and sparkling amber eyes. So much that she immediately changed my nursery interior to gold along with all my baby clothes and toys to match my features. Throughout my childhood, mom continued to spoil me with life's wonderful golden luxuries. One time, I asked for a piano, then voila! A grand classical one made from pure gold appeared. Can you believe that? Another time, I said I wanted a pony. Then, without hesitation, she took me to a farm to meet Goldie, my new mare with the shiniest golden coat. Mom, thank you so much. Honey, gold is the symbol of power and divinity. You must always remember how special you are and never accept anything less than perfection. And those are the words I've been living up to. Back to my birthday party. It's time for birthday cake. But the flowers are pink. I want it all gold. Chef friends, please crepe them all out and replace them with gold ones. I couldn't believe my birthday was almost ruined because of that. Mom patted me on the shoulder to comfort me. Well, Dad just gave a disapproving look. It's just a cake, Lola. How are you going to fit in out there if you insist on being so picky? Maybe you should join a public school to open up your eyes a little. School? Hmm, that's not a bad idea. 
always being homeschooled meant I didn't have any friends. Even the guests today are all my parents' business partners. But mom opposed the idea immediately as she didn't want me to go through any hardships. Don't worry, mom. I'll choose a school that fits all my standards. Pretty please. And of course, she couldn't say no. <laughs> so, here I am, negotiating straight up with the principal. I suppose painting your lock of gold and bringing a personal chef to school and such are doable, but I'm afraid we don't have a private piano room. Then build one. Also, we only have outdoor sports field and swimming pool. So, just install a roof? Don't expect me to play sports in the scorching heat. Miss, unlike your previous tutor, not all the teachers here have a doctorate degree, be bilingual, and in the early to mid-thirties. Hmm, <sighs> in that case, no biggie. I'll just find another school then. No, wait, give me time. As long as your family sponsors the school as promised, I will definitely make it happen. Ha, <laughs> there you go. Finally, it's my first day of school. Immediately, all the students already swarmed around me in all of my noble vibes and fashion sense. No surprises, as this school needs a serious makeover. But wait, that blonde girl looks pretty neat. Ooh, she even carried a yellow Chanel classic flat bag. What a coincidence. Mine's a limited edition. I went to talk to her right away. Her name's Beth, and we just naturally clicked after a brief chat about fashion and cosmetics. Seemed like I found myself an amazing bestie. Every day after class, I took Beth on shopping sprees at Saks for bonding. I got her all the clothes and accessories in gold and yellow, just like mine. I even talked her into bleaching her hair to be bright as mine. We're basically twins now. There's just one problem. Wherever we went, the boys followed. If you go out with me, I'll give you the latest Gucci collection. Sorry, I just bought the whole store. I can pick the stars for you if you want. Is that so? And what should I do with those useless rocks? My dad just bought me a Ferrari. I can take you anywhere. Good for you. Too bad my Rolls Royce is there. Bye! Why do they have to make such a scene? There's no way I'd fall for those idiots. I want my Prince Charming who meets all my golden standards. Hmm, how about just letting everyone know my ideal type? Then I can suss out the pyrite from the real deal boyfriend material. With no time to waste, I created an Ask Me a Question story on IG and it has best to cooperate. <laughs> now all I have to do is to list my requirements. The next morning at school, all of the dorks finally left me alone. Oh, except for this guy. Hey Sugar Plum, I can be the man of your dreams. So, this is Josh, captain of the soccer team. Also the hottest boy here. It seemed he met all of my standards. Is he my perfect missing piece? I was dead wrong. During our date, he blabbed on non-stop about how terrible it was for him for being too rich and too handsome. Ugh, how I longed to shove the steak right into his mouth and go home. But I suppose he did meet my high standards, so maybe I should give him another chance. <sighs> The next morning, during PE class, Beth dashed toward me, holding a super duper stinky shoe. Lola, Josh lied to you. He's not 6'4". Look at this nasty hiding crease insole. He's only 6'3". Ew, gross. Babe, I I'm sorry. I only did it because- That's enough. Take this stinky shoe away from me. We are over. And so, my quest to find true love is at a dead end. Again. Yet, surprisingly, luck had smelled on me once more. Later that day, I came to the practice room as usual when my favorite piece of music reached my ears. Oh my, what a heavenly sight. All of a sudden, I felt my heart skip a beat as I unconsciously walked toward that boy. Seems like someone has a really good taste in music. And your skills? Not so bad either. Well... As long as you open your heart to feel its soul, not just learn the notes. Then he stood up and walked away, not bothering to look back at me once. That was a bit snobby, wasn't it? Yet strangely, I stood there dazed. But wait, who am I to swoon that easily? Let's see if he met my standards first. Beth helped me to find out more about him. Turns out he's Connor, the new transfer student who's trying out for the basketball team. 
So I immediately went to Ken, the captain, and whispered in his ear, asking him to come up with an excuse to make Connor get a physical exam. At my personal doctor's office, of course. The result is finally in. Natural blonde, no baldness, check. 6'5", definitely without height increase insoles, check. White teeth, no cavities, check. Wow, he ticks all the boxes. Then I rushed to the principal's office asking him for Connor's school report. And it was impressive. He's always in the school's top two, actively takes part in extracurricular activities, and he even won a prize in the national basketball competition. Oh my god, he's perfect. But wait, there's one condition left. This should be easy. <laughs> Just a little higher. Higher? Ha! There they are. But these girls were way too obsessed over his abs. Those are mine, okay? That's right. There's no doubt that Connor is my Mr. Right. After that, I shyly handed him a bottle of golden labeled mineral water and asked if he'd like to practice playing piano with me. My heart was thudding like crazy, but he just muttered, Sorry, but I already have a date. Then he went past me to, Lily! What? That nerdy girl with zero social skills? There's no way I can lose to her. I immediately told the principal to switch all my classes to Connor so I could easily approach him. My amazing advisor, Beth, also helped me devise a super detailed step-by-step -step strategy. Soon, Connor will get over boring Lily and fall head over heels for me. First step, scent attraction. Beth told me that Connor loves this no-brand perfume, so I sprayed a bunch of it on and confidently walked into class. But why do people keep sneezing so much? Even Connor was also frowning and holding his nose. Hey Lola, you didn't shower this morning, did you? Spraying a whole bottle of cheap perfume won't help. And the whole class burst into laughter. Ugh, how humiliating. Okay, plan B. Beth suggested a grand confession. Great idea. So when school ended, the cheerleaders and I started a formation right in the middle of the entrance to ask Connor out. But before he could react, a girl suddenly lost her balance and dragged everyone down on top of me. Ouch! This time was sure to move him to tears. But when I was cheering for him, Connor somehow missed his shot and the ball flew straight at me, causing me to tumble face first into the armpit of this smelly guy. Yuck! Why did everything keep going wrong? <sighs> Suddenly, I bumped into... Josh? He grabbed my hand and started begging me to take him back. He said he tried all kinds of ways to grow taller and actually managed to reach 6'4 now. So I should stop pursuing Connor and become his princess instead. Jeez, I'm really not in the mood for this desperado. Let go of me! I then ran into Beth while leaving. She came to tell me that she figured out another way to make Connor mine. It seems like he's really into Lily. We have to separate them. So, I called Lily to a corner and told her as long as she stayed away from Connor, I would buy her whatever she wanted. You know, not everything can be bought. Connor isn't interested in you, so you'd better give up. You're just annoying him. What? I didn't expect quiet, nerdy Lily to say that to someone as lustrous as me. Lily's words had been bothering me all day. Was I wrong to continue pursuing Connor? Suddenly, someone ran past the window and splashed an entire bucket of paint onto Lily. I sat there baffled at what had just unfolded, when Connor immediately took his jacket off and covered Lily up. You're behind this, aren't you? You've really crossed the line. Stay away from us. Wait, he thought I did that? It's true I didn't like Lily, but I just wanted her to stay away from him. I never wanted her to be covered in ghastly purple paint. But the worst was yet to come. As the next day, Connor arrived at school with pitch black hair. Y your beautiful hair. Wh why did you ruin it? But Connor just tutted at me and tried to pull Lily away. You know, there's so much more to Connor than his hair color. Do you even like him for him or just because he happened to meet all of your absurd standards? If you're really into him, why not change your standards for him? I was speechless. Lily was right. I really thought all those standards were enough to make up an amazing boyfriend. Then I realized how Josh had what it takes. Still, I didn't want him. I only wanted Connor. Let's go, Lily. Someone this naive and spoiled will never understand what true love is. Leave her to her scheming.
Wait, why do you keep insisting that I'm the one who harmed Lily? Drop the act. I know that paint stunt was just one of your many dirty tricks. Beth's already sent me the video where you failed to bribe Lily. Huh? Beth? Why did she do that? I was still clueless when suddenly the principal called Beth to his office. I rushed there to find out the culprit splashing paint on Lily was caught, and he revealed that the mastermind was Beth. At first, she tried to deny it, but when the boys showed us their text about the deal, she had to tell the truth. You, you stole everything from me. Before you came here, I was the it girl, but now people only see me as your replica. Why are you so obsessed with that hideous golden color and your stupid standards? I can't believe Josh actually likes you, while well, I was the one by his side when you dumped him. Huh? So Beth liked Josh all this time? She even accepted to date him in secret. But turned out Josh only treated her as a side piece while he tried to win me back. If I can't have Josh, you can never have Connor. Unbelievable! So all this time, I'd let a fox guard the geese. I couldn't bear this place any longer, so I skipped class and went straight home. That night, on seeing how upset I was, Dad came to comfort me. I cried and told him all about my love life and friendship troubles. Honey, maybe it's time you saw others differently. Those standards don't mean anything. You should open your heart and allow yourself to see the good in people. Dad was right. I was so dead set on them that I couldn't see the true nature of the people around me. I chose Beth and Josh based on those standards, but both of them let me down. Meanwhile, Connor deliberately broke them, yet I couldn't shake him from my mind. The standards were like my music sheets. I played each note correctly, but I was so caught up in the practical side of it that I'd forgotten to embrace the soul. So the next morning, I went to apologize to Connor for the troubles I caused him and Lily. I just want you to know, I really like you, no matter what color your hair is. But may I ask you one question? What is it about Lily that you like so much? What? You think I'm dating Lily? <laughs> She's my cousin. Uh-oh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> but wait, in that case, does that mean I still have a chance? Do you remember when you were 10, you participated in a children's piano contest? A gold necklace was stolen from the hotel you were staying at. Yeah, I just have a vague recollection about that incident. The suspect was a blonde boy, a female employee's son but I noticed the necklace peeking through a man's pocket instead. Leave the boy alone! This man is the thief! So that kid was Connor? He was grateful and super impressed with the innocent and righteous girl back then that he recognized me right away the day we met again. However, when he saw how cocky I was, he thought I'd change for the worse and ignored me. Now I see, the admirable girl I know is still there after all this time, so I wouldn't mind if we start getting to know each other anew. Really? Wish me luck this time, you guys. <laughs>
I'll make Jace's assignment mine. Ho-ho, <laughs> genius. That afternoon, I told my PE teacher that Jace was on duty. So she made him go tidy up the gym after class. Meanwhile, I went to his laptop and copied his work. Well, essay, done. Easy peasy. A few days later, the science teacher called the two of us to the office and asked why our assignments were identical. But hey, not only had I submitted it first, but I also had my foot on his neck. So of course I got to keep my A and Jace got an F. Ha! After school, Jace followed me to the car. Then when I was about to get in, he leaped in front of me and slammed the door shut. You're a cheater. You stole my assignment. No, nah, I'm the one who has to say that. I submitted it first. Hearing us arguing, Jace's father stepped out of the car and frantically apologized to me for what his son did. You should know who you are. Your dad's just a servant, which makes you nothing. I smirked. Then I snatched the key from his dad's hand and jumped in the car. I'll get home by myself today. Bye, losers. That nerd had ruined my mood, and now I needed to cheer myself up with some fun. Oh boy, that party was awesome. As I passed through a tunnel, I turned the music volume up to max and swayed along. Suddenly, I looked up to see a truck whizzing towards me, so I swerved just in time and crashed into the road railing. Jeez, what the... I mumbled, then got out of the car. Anyway, I left my car there and got an Uber home. But hang on. Why was everyone driving on the left side of the road today instead of the right? Maybe the combination of alcohol and dizziness was making me imagine stuff. I opened my eyes and stretched out my arms. Ouch! Um, this wasn't my room. In my drunken haze, I must have wandered into someone's shabby home. I rushed out of there and ran downstairs to find my mom and dad in the kitchen having breakfast. Victor, hurry up, else you'll be late. Oh, uh, don't forget you're helping your mom out in the grocery store after school. What's with all this role-playing? Where am I? Terrified, I ran outside to check. What? The address is correct. 138 Riverside. But my house was a magnificent mansion. What's this hovel? Surely this is just some dream, right? I rushed back into the house and shouted, Mom, Dad, what's happened to our mansion? Son, are you dreaming? Ha <laughs> ha, us rich enough to have a mansion. Now that's an unlikely thought. Now go change your clothes and I'll take you to school. No way. This was just a bad dream. Which often ends when we reach another location, right? Maybe when I get to school, everything will return to normal. Oh, school looks exactly the same. I was so relieved. I walked along the corridor and greeted people. Huh? Why were they blanking me? Ugh, have they forgotten who's the boss around here? But never mind, there's my honey bunch Jessica. I ran over to her and kissed her cheek. But I hugged my cheek in shock. My head was spinning, then suddenly someone nudged me from behind. It was Jace? I grabbed his collar. How dare he mess with me right in front of Jessica. Get your hands off my boyfriend. You're Jace's choice this week, so mind your attitude. Jace chose me? <laughs> Who do you think you are? A dog-poor dude like you wouldn't be able to have a proper life and to attend this school without my family. Take a look at yourself. Honey, ignore him. Let's go. Jessica rubbed his arm and then they both left. I stood there dumbfounded. What on earth was going on? I felt like I tumbled into an alternate universe. I slapped myself in the face to snap out of it. Ouch! Why wasn't I waking up from this nightmare? This all started with that tunnel, right? If that was the door into this world, then it would also be the door out of this insanity. So I got in a cab to go back there. But wait, where was the tunnel? I made the driver go back and forth a few times, but it wasn't there. Then I ran out of money for the ride back, so the driver just left me there. Bewildered, I wandered around aimlessly till I reached a grocery store, where I spotted my mom working. Gosh, my mom who always had servants around, now had to work her butt off? I couldn't bear seeing her like this and rushed over to help her. The next day I woke up early and thought that I'd choose a decent outfit to go to school. Well, life has to go on, so while I'm still stuck here, I should at least play my part. But, ugh, this version of me has terrible fashion taste. And look, now I've turned into a real nerd. I need to change it up a bit. When I arrived at school and opened my locker, there was a list of orders from Jay's. What? Clean all of the dirt off his sneakers? This was nonsense. So I threw the piece of paper into the trash. Then out of nowhere, Arthur quickly picked it up and whispered into my ear. Dude, I suggest you do as Jace says. Why? He's ridiculous. To keep the peace. No one actually likes him. We're only nice to him because we don't want any trouble. And seeing Jace approaching, Arthur hurried away. Over the next few days, I saw it firsthand. 
People sucked up to Jace, but then behind his back, they were mean about him. He walked around like he ruled the school. He even got one kid expelled just because they reported him when he cheated on an exam. Such a spoiled brat. Also, Jessica was such a gold digger. One time, I caught her flirting with one of those basketball guys. I even overheard her say, If Jace wasn't a rich kid, I wouldn't look at him twice. He's just an ATM to me. Hang on. If Jess thought that about Jace, then did she think the same way about me when we were dating? So all this time, Jace never had a real friend, just like me before. Honestly, he was detestable, but pitiable at the same time. After that, I noticed that Jess kept on giving me these flirty looks. I didn't want any trouble, so I ignored her. Then one time when I was in the hallway, she stormed over to me and yelled, Why are you avoiding me? No one ever rejects me. I was trying to stay away from her. Then, from nowhere, Jace appeared throwing a tantrum. What's this about? I didn't have a chance to explain as Jess immediately rushed over to Jace. Honey, he keeps approaching me. He won't leave me alone. It's not like that. She's using you. I looked at him in panic. Parking lot, 3.30 p.m. You'll pay for messing with my girlfriend. Then the two walked away, hands in hands. So, after school, I nervously went to the parking lot. He threw the car key at me and sneered. Drive. You better do as I say or else I'll make sure you're expelled. It didn't look like I had much of a choice. So I decided to go with him to find out what that maggot would do. He made me drive him home. <laughs> Simple enough. But then as soon as I opened the door, my dad appeared. And in a pleading voice said to Jace, Please, sir, don't have my son expelled. Dad, what are you doing? Apologize to him at once, no matter what the reason is. Dad looked at me with steady eyes. Jace sneered at my dad and said, how about you take the blame so we won't get expelled? Then he threw a bunch of money at my dad's face. You're fired. I shouted at him. You can't treat people awfully just because you have money. Victor, stop. You're wrong. Please, I saved you from the accident, so please forgive my son. Then dad pulled one trouser leg to reveal his artificial leg. That was the first time I saw my dad cry. Wait, this reminded me of what happened last year. I was being such a jerk to this guy that he purposefully drove towards me for vengeance. But Jace's dad darted forward and pushed me out of the way. I know he was badly injured, but as an insouciant boy, I didn't think it was a big deal. Whoa, I really was so arrogant. I expected everyone to bow down to me, and I actually thought everyone wanted to be my friend, when in actual fact, I had no true friends at all. My head felt like it was going to explode. I wanted to run away, so I jumped into the car and drove away without thinking. I stopped the car when I saw it, the tunnel that had changed my life. Suddenly, this blinding light shone straight into my eyes. The next thing I knew, both me and the car were gravitating towards the light. Huh? Where am I? It looks like a hospital. Then I heard a yelp of delight and someone held my hand tightly. Oh, it was my mom. Thank goodness you're awake, she said, as tears streamed down her cheeks. Mom, Dad, why am I here? What day is it today? Son, it's May 22nd. You've been in a coma for the past three months. We weren't even sure if you were going to make it. It turns out that day, on the way home from the party, in the tunnel, I had a terrible car crash and ended up in a coma. So what I'd been through was just a dream, right? But the odd thing was that the time I'd lived in that mysterious world completely coincided with the time when I was in the coma. Could parallel universes be physically real? Whatever that strange universe was about, one thing was for sure. I'd learned my lesson. After being discharged from the hospital, I went back to being Victor, Jack a dandy. But don't get me wrong, I was not the extravagant me of the past. No, I'm a changed guy. The first thing I did when I returned to my normal life was to break up with that gold digger, Jessica. But the hungry leech kept begging me to get back together. How shameless. Next, I for sure have to stop making other kids do my errands and started to have small talk with them instead of giving orders. Now there was only one thing left to do. I needed to make amends with Jace. I asked my parents to give his dad a raise and also throw a little dinner party this weekend to invite his family around. As I felt bad that I haven't had a chance to thank Jace's dad properly for what he did for me last year. Of course, my parents gladly agreed and said that they're proud of me for being so thoughtful. So I'm preparing a little peacemaker gift for Jace too. I bet this is going to make him geek out all the way. <laughs> It was just a regular school day and I was sorting out my locker when suddenly I heard hushed whispers and noticed that everyone else was staring at something. Okay, so turns out it wasn't a something, but a someone. 
As this pretty girl strutted down the corridor like it was a runway or something. Ugh. Why was everyone gulping at her, rushing over to greet her, and sticking notepads in her face for her to sign? I hugged my books and muttered, Geez, there's nothing special about her. So, my name's Lily, and I'm just a normal girl. My family, yeah, they're normal. My appearance, normal. And my social status, well, that's just normal too. I coast through life, and that's it. Nothing exciting ever happens to a regular girl like me. Oh, how I long to be the perfect looking girls on Instagram. They're so flawless in their clear skin, stylish clothes, and glossy hair. But those girls were different. They were from different worlds. Oh well, at least I still had my books, my bestie Sarah, and my cute boyfriend Brian. But this all changed when Stacy rocked up at school with her perfect looks and her I'm so sweet and friendly routine. Yeah, right. So what if she had a prettyish face and a bit part in some TV show underneath the fake shine she was clearly not all that? I walked into English class to see her sitting at the desk next to mine. Ugh, great. I couldn't even get to my seat because everyone else was surrounding her, asking her dumb questions such as, What shampoo do you use? And do you get snack breaks when you film your show? Jeez, give me a break instead. Then, when I finally managed to sit down, she smiled at me and in this sickly sweet voice said, Hi, I hope it's okay I sit here. I'm Stacy. Yeah, sure. I forced a smile back, but on the inside, my anger was boiling over. Who did this girl think she was? So what if she was beautiful? I bet she only cared about her looks and never bothered studying. Yeah, everyone else would soon realize what a failure she was. Then, one time during recess, Stacy, the living Barbie doll, suggested we start a yearbook and now everyone's treating her like she's achieved world peace or something. Ugh, you know the worst part of it? I've been saying we should start a yearbook for years, but no one listened to me. And guess who received so many welcome cards and love notes that they fell out of her locker and obstructed the hallway? Yup, Stacy. Gosh, it's been like, weeks already. When will these stop? I hated how she thanked everyone and blushed and ugh. I needed to be around a sane person who didn't think the sun shone out of her. She was everywhere. It made me sick. But thank God for lunchtime. It became the only peaceful time of the day for me when I could hang out with Sarah and not have to worry about Stacy. But ha, huh, what was this? What was that Barbie doll doing sitting at our table and talking to my best friend. I walked over there and placed my tray down next to Sarah. Oh, hi, Lily. Stacy just said the funniest thing. Great, I muttered under my breath. Lunch was an ordeal. Sarah ignored me and kept on asking Stacy dumb questions like, Is your co-star Kyle as handsome in real life? And how do you style printed skirts with a colored tee? Yawn! Later that day, due to a paint spillage in art, I was five minutes late out. Sarah had agreed to drive me home, but I went out to the parking lot. Her car wasn't there. Then I checked my phone and saw that she'd messaged me. Where are you? I can't wait anymore. I'll leave first with Stacy. See you tomorrow, X. What? Is she ditching me to give that phony a ride? We had been friends since childhood. How could she be fooled for Stacy's act and just throw away our friendship like that? Angry, I messaged her back. You abandoned me for Little Miss Popular? How could you? I get it. New one in, old one out. Well, thanks a lot. My phone buzzed with her reply. Lily, you know it isn't like that. You live up the road from school while Stacy lives much further away and she needed to get back in time to get ready for her filming schedule. Madder than ever, I quickly typed out my reply. What? Ever. It's too bad you'll always be a nobody in her eyes, and she's just using you for a free ride. Then I chucked my phone onto my bed. I'd had enough. Sarah had made her choice, and it was to be friends with that fake over me. 
Sarah may have fallen into the Stacy trap, but at least I still had Brian, right? One afternoon, I was talking to him out in the schoolyard when Stacy tottered past. Even her try to hard walk was annoying. She smiled over my Brian. Then she deliberately tripped up and dropped the books she was holding. I grabbed Brian's arm to stop him from going over, but he shook himself free from my grip and went over to her anyway. I watched him help her pick her books up, and then she blushed and squeaked out a thank you. She was the worst. When he walked back over to me with this big grin on his face, I couldn't take it anymore. So I blurted out to him, How dare you leave me to help her? He gave me a confused look. Lily, I was just helping her out. Yeah, right. You knew she dropped them on purpose to get your attention. But you went over there to her anyway because you think she's prettier than me. He sighed. You're being ridiculous. You know what? I can't deal with your selfish, jealous streak anymore. Let's just call it a day. We're done. Then he walked off. I stood there watching him, expecting him to cool down and come back. Only he didn't. This was all Stacy's fault. She'd stolen my best friend and my boyfriend. No more. It was time to show her that she wasn't so perfect after all. I scrolled through her social media pages for ideas, and it soon became apparent that she loves boys with toned abs who ride motorbikes. How predictable. I discovered this website where I could hire a boy to play with her heart, then ditch her. It's about time she learned how much it sucked to be undesirable and worthless. Ha! I found the perfect guy called Josh. He was 19, a gym addict, and he had a motorbike. Whoa, he was expensive, but it would be worth it, right? I arranged to meet him at the local coffee shop, and jeez, he was even more handsome in person. I wished I could use this money to actually make him mine. Sigh. So, the deal is, he's gonna flirt with Stacy, make her love him deeply, and then break up with her. The next Monday, I walked out of school to see Josh parked up to the school gate, holding his helmet and looking like he belonged in a movie. Naturally, every girl was staring at him, but he made a beeline for Stacy. Then, just one week later, I saw him picking up Stacy from the school. Whoa! I knew that! I knew I had chosen the right person. Josh was such a lady killer. They looked super close and I had to remind myself that he was just an actor and he was doing his job. <laughs> she was going to be so heartbroken. But a few weeks later and he was still picking her up. Huh? Why hadn't he broken up with her yet? So I called him up and asked him what was taking him so long. He replied that he would do it soon. He was just making her fall for him more before he did it. <laughs> Brutal. Only the weeks passed by and he still hadn't ended it. Then I was walking past the movie theater and I spotted them there, kissing. What? This was not the plan! Furious, I had arranged to meet him the next day at the coffee shop. He walked over and couldn't even meet my eye as he said, I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore. I will refund you as soon as I can. Um, why? Have you fallen in love with her or something? I said jokingly. There was a long silence. Then he looked down at the table and muttered out, Yeah, I have. Why was I the only one on the planet who saw how thick she was? Thanks to her siren ways, I lost my best friend, my boyfriend, and now my savings. This was it. I needed to confront her. The next day at school, I tried finding her, but she was nowhere to be found. Then, as I passed through the school garden, I saw her sitting there. Gotcha. It's time to tell her exactly what I thought of her. I stormed over to her and opened my mouth to speak. But huh? Why was she crying? When she saw me, she managed to smile and said, Oh, hi, Lily. Is there a chance you could help me? I stared at her with disbelief. Did she think I was under her spell and would do her bidding? But then I saw what she was crying about. In her hands was her English essay with a big F on it. So I replied, Um, why me? You're so smart. You answer all the questions in class correctly. I don't want to be judged on my bad grades. That's why I left my last school. The other kids call me a brainless beauty. I moved here for a fresh start and now I'm still failing. Okay, so in that moment, I realized that there were things I was good at. My grades were good and I was pretty great at remembering facts. I'd just been so blinded by jealousy that I lost focus on these things and only saw what I didn't have. None of this was Stacy's fault. She never actually done anything bad to me. I'd made it all up in my head because I was jealous of her. So I sat down next to her and said, No one's going to call you that because I'll help you study. You will? 
She gave me a hopeful smile and I nodded. Thank you so much, she flung her arms around me. So that's how Stacy went from being my enemy to my friend. She's actually a really sweet and kind-hearted girl. No wonder why everyone admired her so much. And I was wrong to judge her on her appearance and not give her a fair chance. She's still with Josh and she doesn't know that I hired him to break her heart. But hey, she now has a hunky boyfriend who adores her, so that could be considered compensation, right? Brian and I are still over, but thinking about it, maybe this was for the best. I know I overreacted, but he gave me up so easily. And well, I want to find a guy who won't do that. As for Sarah, I went around to her house with a bag full of her favorite candy, and I apologized for being a jealous jerk. Luckily for me, she forgave me. Now, Sarah, Stacy, and I have become good friends. Sarah and I both help Stacy with her studies, and she gives us fashion tips. And you know what? I've come to realize that I'm pretty after all. I just needed to discover my spark. So finally, I learned that no one's perfect. Perfection is just an illusion. The most important thing is that we feel happy with what we own and never stop improving ourselves. So just be you and let everyone else concentrate on being them. It was a normal Monday morning. I was standing by my locker when this Layla girl walked over, leaned against the locker next to mine, and talked to me in this sultry voice. Hi, handsome. Do you have any plans after school? I looked around in confusion. Huh? Was she talking to me? Usually girls like Layla didn't talk to guys like me. I mean, come on, look at her. She's the hottest girl in school. While I'm Felix, <laughs> just your average-looking nerdy guy. I awkwardly replied, Oh, hi, uh, I'm just doing my homework after school, bye. Then I left her there, dumbfounded. But it didn't end there. At the end of school, she approached me again and asked, Do you want to hang out with me? Followed by a wink. Uh, no thanks, uh, I really have to finish my paper on the French Revolution. Then I walked off. Man, did she really want to hang out with me? <laughs> no way. She must have lost a bet or something. Even on the next day, Layla, one more time, made a beeline for me with this scary, determined look on her face while I was chatting with my friends. And in a serious tone, she said, Look, Felix, do you want to be my boyfriend? What? All my friends started to cheer. I was so embarrassed that I shooed them away to get some privacy with Layla. Um, I'm flattered, but no. She scowled at me. Excuse me? Do you realize that I'm Layla Hall, the prettiest and most popular girl in this entire school? Not to mention a member of the cheerleading team. Ugh, cheerleaders are so dramatic. I calmly replied, Sorry, but you're just not my type. She shouted back, What? I'm everybody's type! I just shrugged and left. My god, that was awkward. But at least she got the hint now, right? Well, wrong. Because that's when the trouble just began. Firstly, it was this flood of junk emails and newsletters. Then strange phone calls from the spa and nail salon asking if I had made appointment for the day, which I obviously didn't. On top of that, there's a fake Facebook account that started spreading unflattering pictures of me around, picking my nose in French class, pulling this weird tongue-out concentration face as I checked over my essay. There was even a slow-mo clip of me chewing like a camel as I enjoyed my burger. Man, I was an ugly eater. While I was scrolling through these pics, Layla jumped out at me with a big smirk on her face. Be my boyfriend, then the pranks will stop. Right, uh, of course it was her. Didn't she have better things to do? I shook my head and said, Pfft, no thanks. This still beats being with an annoying girl like you. Then a few days later, as I walked into school, I noticed that everyone was giving me dirty looks. Was my shirt inside out or something? Nope. So what was the problem? I asked some of my friends and, geez. Layla told everyone that I kissed her, then ghosted her. She's a real-life Harley Quinn. Hot, but totally crazy. Only a lunatic like the Joker could love her. I'd had enough of her antics. I couldn't let her make me look like the bad guy for something I didn't do. So at lunch, I charged over to her table and yelled in her face. Are you crazy? Why can't you understand that I don't like you? Then I shouted so everyone could hear me. Hey, listen, this rumor about me kissing and ghosting Layla is a total lie. She made it all up because I refused to date her. So please, save your dirty looks for someone else. Thank you. Layla shoved past me and ran out of there. Ugh, okay, maybe I was a little harsh. But you'd brought it on yourself, princess. Then, during French class, she was absent, but no one knew where she went. Was it maybe because of me? Nah, probably not. 
but as I was walking home, I spotted her sitting alone on a swing in the playground. Just go, Felix. This girl only brings trouble, I thought to myself. But oh man, she looked so sad. So the next thing I knew, I was walking over and sat on the swing next to her. I asked, why weren't you in French class? Just leave me alone. Stop pretending you care. Look, I took a deep breath, then continued. I'm sorry for yelling at you in front of the whole school. That that wasn't cool. But what you did to me wasn't cool either. Shall we call it even? Layla stayed quiet for a bit, but then she nodded and smiled at me. Well, that wasn't so bad, right? So from then onward, everything was fine between us. She even smiled at me in the hallway. Whenever I saw Layla, this warm feeling came over me, and I couldn't stop grinning. Once, I even spent my entire lunch break trapezing around school just so I could catch a glimpse of her face. Oh boy, I think I've fallen for Layla. But why now? I tried to ignore these feelings, hoping they'd eventually go away. But then Valentine's Day came along and Layla, being the popular girl she is, received enough roses to open a florist. Ugh, how annoying. I needed to do something. So after school, I went to her house with some chocolates and a teddy bear. As soon as she opened the door, I blurted out, I know I'm a big dumb idiot. Rejecting you was a huge mistake. Please, will you be my Valentine? I stood there red-faced and prepared for rejection. But she just snatched the gift out of my hands, then said, Yeah, okay then. Oh my god, I couldn't believe it. Me, your regular nerdy guy, was dating the most popular girl in school. Love is really unpredictable. I was amazed at how open she was to my nerdy stuff. She even watched The Mandalorian with me and cooed whenever she saw Baby Yoda. But the one thing that didn't gel so well between us was, yep, you guessed it, studying. Layla didn't seem to care about her grades, and I didn't want her to fail, so I offered to be her tutor. But she was constantly yawning and staring out of the window whenever we started studying. Felix, I have an idea. Why don't you do my homework for me? In the meantime, I can go to cheerleading practice as we have an important contest coming up, and it means the world to me, just like your math quizzes do to you. What? Was she serious? My God, I hated cheating like this. But she gave me that puppy-eyed look, and me being the sucker I am, I agreed. Thanks, Felix. You're the best. She kissed me on the cheek, then immediately passed me a huge pile of homework. I asked her why she had so much, and she explained that because she didn't understand it, she let them pile up. But hold on, why did she have Spanish? She was in French class with me, not Spanish. But she just shrugged and said her parents forced her to study it outside of school. Oh, my poor little pumpkin. One day, like usual, I stopped by her place to pick up her homework, but she wasn't home. That was odd. Today wasn't cheerleading practice, so where could she be? I looked through the stack that she asked her mom to give me and saw some Spanish worksheets. So I said to her mom, Oh, she must be in her Spanish lesson, right? Her mom looked a bit confused, then laughed. <laughs> you know Layla. She's far too stubborn to agree to extra classes. Huh? So the papers weren't hers? Then whose it was? And why? Suddenly I felt this uncomfortable feeling itching under my skin. I decided to confront her later at school. Then the next day I was walking through the hallway looking for Layla when I suddenly heard some guys cheering, something about getting an A in Spanish. Wait a minute, did he say Spanish? I turned to see who it was, and to my shock it was Hector, the captain of the soccer team. Hector was popular for being all handsome and everything, but also for sucking at school. Someone must have done his homework for him, and you guessed it, yeah. This someone was me. Ah, it all made sense now. Layla and Hector must be a couple. They may have been hot stuff, but they both sucked at studying. So she was using me to do both of their homework. It all made much more sense now. None of this relationship was real. It was all just an act. And no way was I letting them get away with this. I had a perfect plan to expose them. During lunch, I sat down at the table closest to Hector. Then I went into lovey-dovey overload with Layla. I fed her cheese fries, then I stroked her hair and loudly told her how soft it was. I quickly glanced over at Hector for his reaction, but nothing. He seemed more interested in her burger than her. Layla raised an eyebrow at me. Um, are you okay? You're acting really weird. I laughed loudly, then placed my arms around her, then said, well, um, it was actually more like shouting. Oh, because you're so cute! But huh? Why was there still no reaction from Hector? He and his friends even cheered, and on his way out of the canteen, he gave me a thumbs up. Layla didn't look phased at all either. Man, somebody call the Academy, because these two deserved an Oscar. My plan was a massive fail. Ugh, this was so frustrating. I fell silent, and Layla noticed and gave me this quizzing look. Something is definitely off. You're being really strange. Okay, if she wanted to know, then fine. So I blurted out. 
I know that the Spanish papers belong to Hector. You're together and you're just using me to do all your homework. I'm not stupid, you know. Nice meeting you, but please don't ever talk to me again. Then I left without saying a word. Well, that's the end of my story. A rather sad one, right? I would be lying if I said I wasn't feeling down about it. I truly do love her. (laughs) Whatever. I'm going to college in a few months and I'll get to meet a cute, geeky girl who won't trick me into doing some other dude's homework. (sighs) Oh, uh, sorry guys, someone's calling me. My god, it's Layla. What does she want? We're done. Stop calling. What? Fine. Promise you'll leave me alone after this? Okay, wait. I'm coming downstairs. Uh, Oh my god. Layla's at my front door and she insists to not leave unless I have a talk with her. Ugh. Don't move, everyone. I'll tell you every detail as soon as I'm back. Jesus, guys. You won't believe what Layla's just told me. The thing is that her cheerleading team had to practice a lot for upcoming contests, which means they couldn't study as much. Therefore, they had to find someone who was willing to do their homework so their grades wouldn't slip. That's when Layla came up with the plan to win me over as her boyfriend. The flirting, the pranks, <laughs> they were all part of her plan. That was the truth. But Layla didn't know about the Spanish worksheets, because her teammate Harper gave them to her. Turns out Hector is Harper's boyfriend. Didn't see that coming, right? But I was still super mad at Layla, because she still used me. Then Layla took out some papers and showed them to me. Huh? It was homework with all B's on them. Then she told me, okay, I admit that at first I didn't like you. I only approached you to take advantage of you, but then I actually fell for you as I got to know you better, okay? So I stopped giving you my homework and did it on my own. So, her feelings for me were real too? I couldn't believe it. Eventually I forgave her and now we're happier than ever. I must say, when Layla first talked to me, I thought she was this crazy girl like Harley Quinn who I could never like, but I was wrong. Turns out I'm the one who's crazy about her. So, I guess I have more in common with the Joker than I first thought. (laughs) Is it usual for you to sit on strangers the first time you meet them? This jerk. I'll show him that he's messing with the wrong girl. It's fine. Please don't hit him. Don't worry. And this is for mugging a kid. No, no, you got it wrong. He just saved me. From those muggers. And he was just teaching me how to fight back at them. Oh my. I thought it was just because the boy's bag was on the ground and that guy was holding his arm like he was about to hit him. I awkwardly stood up, literally screamed out to apologize, then ran straight home. So, as you can see, my home's a little different from the usual. My parents run a nursing home, so I grew up surrounded by the elderly. You were so embarrassed that you left him laying there and ran away? The first time I met my husband, I also knocked him over with my dolio chagi. Perhaps this boy is your destiny. Poof! No way, Mrs. Jones. Suddenly, my dad huffed past us. Oh no, I know that look. Something was bad. Lately, our finances haven't been so good. I went after him to check he was okay and found him talking to a man in the yard. On seeing me, the strange man waved me over. Do you know this person? Huh? That was the guy I almost punched earlier. That's right. The person you almost knocked out is my son. I saw everything, so I followed you here. He's got in with a bad crowd and lost focus on his studies. I want you to steer him in the right direction. I... I don't want to be a babysitter. I'm sorry. It's too bad about this nursing retreat, isn't it? Seems like it'll have to close soon. Although, if swayed, I don't mind being a major sponsor. (gasps) This was insane. So, all I needed to do was keep an eye on his son, and all the nursing home's problems would be solved? Dad said I didn't have to do it if I didn't want to, but how could I say no? Okay, I'll do it. So, which school am I transferring to? Jeez, everything here was so shiny. But if I had a choice, this would be the last school in town I ever wanted to attend. I entered the classroom and walked over to the only empty seat that happened to be at the back. I was about to sit down, then... Ah! Some dude pulled the chair aside and caused me to fall onto my butt. A hand appeared to pull me up, but as I went to grab it... It immediately drew back, leaving me sitting there embarrassed while everyone's laughing at me. Oops, sorry. 
I guess I should only give a hand when asked, right? Ugh, it was Blake. I quickly regained my cool face, sat down, and put on my headphones, pretending like I didn't hear any of those comments from other students about my rustic look. This girl seems interesting. The usual. A grand if you can win her heart in a month. Deal? Blake glanced at me and sneered at the guy. Easy. Deal. So that's how it's gonna be, is it? Luckily, I hadn't turned my music on yet, hence why I heard the whole conversation. Let me help you get some extra pocket money then, Blake. And it didn't take him long to start implementing his plan. At lunchtime, he enthusiastically led me to the canteen, guided me to get food, and even asked the lunch lady to get me an extra portion of yogurt. Nice try. I was trying to enjoy my lunch when a shrill voice sounded out. Get up and get me some food. I want a cupcake just like yours. Now! Jeez, why did some girls think it was okay to treat guys like this? Frustrated, I went over there, picked up the cake from that boy's tray, and shoved it into her mouth. There, happy now? Poor thing, your arms must be so broken that you can't get food yourself. Let me feed you then. You're welcome. Are you crazy? You're dead meat today. She raised her hand about to slap me, but I quickly dodged, causing her to fall to the ground. As for me, I calmly sat down next to the boy and had my lunch. Sorry for wasting the cake. You can have my yogurt if you want. He's Kai, my first friend at this new school. He's witty, smart, and has a seriously impressive academic record. He was actually here on scholarship, which explained why he didn't quite fit in, just like me. I noticed how Blake seemed rather annoyed and kept staring at me. I bet he was just fed up with being teased by his friends, since I just totally ignored him. Oh, but he didn't give up that easily. The next morning, he showed up at mine to pick me up, but I'd rather run two laps around the schoolyard for being late than share a ride with you. Then at school, he tripped me up and then reached out his hand pretending to help. But between you and the floor, I picked the floor. He even waited for me at the school gates with a huge bouquet of roses. But I just took one look at them, then started coughing. Are you allergic to flowers? <coughs> nope. I'm allergic to immature and boring people, like you. Then I walked off. Ugh as if every girl was going to fall for these lame tricks. This carried on for the next few weeks, but then one time, he approached me in the library while I was studying with Kai and handed me a necklace. I looked at it, then passed it back to him and turned to talk to Kai. Seriously? You're turning me down for this nerd? Kai's smart, gallant, and sophisticated, unlike you. All you are is a troublemaker. Are you looking down on me? Oh, finally. I was wondering how much longer would it take for you to figure that out. Not to mention, you've not helped once with the English Lit essay. You're in my group, but you probably just think the Grapes of Wrath is a rock band or something. So, if I can finish that essay on my own, will you go on a date with me? Fine, but it has to score an A, else you can forget it. And my trick worked. Blake actually completed the essay on his own. He's smart, but he's neglectful of his studies, and it's made him make mistakes. On being handed back the essay, Blake's face fell. He got a B, and even though he knew it was over, he still stayed in class to reread the teacher's comments. It seemed like this was the first time he actually put in the effort to do something. <laughs> What's wrong? Still in denial of your failure? Blake turned away without looking at me. The rich boy who lost the game for the first time looked so cute. So I put a gift with a message in it on Blake's desk. Needless to say, he was over the moon. In it was a set of clothes I'd bought for him and an invitation to a bar at the weekend. Why, you wonder? Oh, you'll see. That Saturday night, Blake showed up in the outfit I had gifted him and looked anything but pleased. <laughs> I can't come in wearing this. It's so old-fashioned. My friends will laugh at me. You invited your friends, too? To prove that you won the bet, right? If you get that thousand dollars, will I have a share? You already knew it? 
I was just joking at first, but now... Let's go inside now. Don't worry, we won't be here for long. I dragged him inside, and immediately, his friends didn't miss the opportunity to tease me. Did the fish get hooked? Yes, I'm trapped. Quickly give him a grand. His family is bankrupt and in dire need of money. Huh? What? You're lying. Look, he's wearing donated clothes. Even his branded clothes have been liquidated. I winked at Blake, and he immediately reacted. Lend me some money. I need a place to stay, a sports car, and pocket money too. At this point, his friends turned nasty and told him he no longer qualified to be in their group. You didn't have to do that. I already knew they only hung out with me for the money. But that's what people are just like. <sighs> Why would he think that? He must have never been cared for and loved properly. Get rid of that face. This is a date, after all. Let me make it up to you. A bar that matches this outfit. So I dragged Blake to our evening party. I told everyone that I brought a friend to lend a hand, and the elderly immediately made him do all sorts of things. Mrs. Hastings asked him to climb the tree to hang the string lights. Mr. Derbyshire called him to chop wood for the campfire, and Mr. Shaw wanted him to taste his homebrewed beer. Then the next second, Blake's already sitting on the drum throne. Huh, <laughs> it's been a long time since we had a young volunteer. That boy seems fine, doesn't he? I saw the way he looked at you. He's not suitable for me. I shrugged in response to her and suddenly felt disappointed. Yes, I liked this different side to him, but we were still from different worlds. The next morning at school, I still saw Blake hanging out with his greedy friends. Looks like he hadn't learned his lesson. Frustrated that all my efforts were in vain, I swung open my locker. Hmm, what was this note? Meet me at the library at 6 p.m. when everyone has left. I have a surprise for you. B. I shouldn't be like this, right? Waiting for him at the library for hours until everyone left, nervous and excited. But as soon as the last person left, the lights suddenly went out, and the library door slammed shut. What's happening? Could it be that the note wasn't from Blake? I screamed out of fear. That's right. I may excel at martial arts, but I hate the dark. With a shaking hand, I dialed the phone to call Blake, and then slumped down in fear and sobbed. At that moment, the sound of the door unlocking startled me. As soon as the door opened, I quickly ran to hug Blake. Are you okay? I can't believe Chloe did this. I told you not to get near them. Huh? This wasn't Blake's voice. Freya, are you okay? Oh my god, it was Kai who opened the door to save me. But I thought that... I quickly let go of him, then ran away in embarrassment. That's strange. When I was in danger, the first person I thought of was Blake. Could it be that I... really liked him? At that moment, the phone rang. It was my dad. Mrs. Jones had suffered a heart attack and needed surgery immediately. But the surgery cost was so much. Where could we get that money? Ah, oh, yes. Blake's dad. So I called him. Hello, is this Mr. Morris? Blake stopped hanging out with his friends and did his homework. I really need the money now. Please, it's urgent. Are you bringing me out to trade with my dad? My God. It seems like Blake heard all the conversation. I... I... So, I'm just your money-making tool? And all this time you've trained me as your pet? It's not like that! We'll talk later. There's no time for your selfish thoughts right now. I gotta go! I ran like crazy to the hospital. My parents were desperate, and the money hadn't arrived yet. So I called Mr. Morris again. You said Blake had changed. If this is the case, then why did he just get fined for speeding and resisting police? Don't ever call me again. Don't worry, Freya. I'll sell the nursing home land to take care of Mrs. Jones. Everyone's agreed to move to the government nursing home. We sold our house, and now we live with Mrs. Jones in a new town. She's so much better now. 
but I do miss the other elderly people. Also, I miss Blake. I still keep in touch with Kai, and he told me that Blake has gone to some military school like his dad wanted. Well, that's unexpected from him. You should talk to that guy. Not about what you did, but confess your feelings to him. That will save you from regrets later. Then she patted me on the shoulder to comfort me. But I really don't have the courage to do it. I was feeling guilty. Mrs. Jones, you have a letter. Freya, look, it's the invitation to a nursing home concert. It's our concert, isn't it? Trembling, I took the invitation. What is this? I pushed Mrs. Jones's wheelchair to the door of the nursing home named Sunflower. When we walked in, we all burst into tears. Everyone was there. This is all Blake's doing. He's such a kind boy. He found us and built us a dream nursing home. You and Freya were the surprise gift we prepared for him, but as soon as he saw the two of you, he ran away. Hearing that, I rushed to the gate. A car passed me. My gut told me it was him. I ran after it and shouted in despair, Blake, wait! I like you! I really like you! But the car quickly went out of sight. I helplessly slumped down on the street, tears streaming down my face, and I still muttered, I really do like you. What are you saying? Say it louder. I turned around startled. It was Blake. He was in his military uniform and smiling at me fondly.